Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Performance E Streaming and Ansgar for the Daytona 500 of 2022. Yes, the season is finally starting proper for the Cups. The race is about to begin. The 500 is here. We have oh a fair amount of cars out there tonight with 43 cars in the field. It's going to be a big race. And joining me tonight, well, tonight, today, I should say, in the broadcast booth, I have Dave Douglas, who unfortunately couldn't make it into the race, but has made it into the booth. How are you going, Dave? Hey, good day, everybody. Uh, yeah, going all right. Uh, much rather be out there on track, but next best thing, I'm here in a booth, going to call the race for uh, for performance hey. history here tonight. So hey, good day, good. everybody. Uh... Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you back in the booth. As I said, I'd rather you have you out on the track. Uh, you were you were Matt's pick for the race win, of course. So uh, he's he's already lost the bet. So we've we've made some money tonight. So that's some good news. <laughs> <laughs> the only real winner here is the bookies, mate. But yeah, no, I had a had a wedding to go to, so I couldn't make the jewels. So um, sometimes yeah, real life just gets in the way. Unfortunately, as is the case. But we have you here in the booth today. So what are we expecting from the race, Dave? Oh, hopefully excitement, mate. I'm, I'm anticipating uh, not anything like last year. Last year it sort of went single file. Uh, that's just the way their cars were set up. But uh, this year proves to be different with these next gen cars. Got five gears. They look pretty nice. They look all. They all actually look beautiful. Actually, out there, all them look going through all the cars now. So hopefully we can uh, race in the pack here and uh, yeah, get some good racing throughout. But obviously, uh, got to keep an eye out for the big one because uh, it's going to happen at some point. As long as you're not in it, you've got a chance to win it. Very much so. And, of course, we've got very different cars this season. The 7th Gen of the, the uh, Cup car is now here. And it is a big change over the last generation, of course. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, they've got the fuses on them. They've got a, a mono lug wheel nut, as, a, uh, as the professionals call it. Um, so it's all a bit different, but very much sort of the same going racing, though. So uh, it's more the... Uh, what do you call it? The aesthetics of it. Uh, they race. They race pretty well, and they drive the same. So we'll see how we go here. Yeah, very much so. Of course, the the non-professional term is the the hit will it hit the hit the wheel nut because it's only one of them. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, of course they have the uh, sequential shifter now as well. So you've got five gears to play with. So a little bit different in that respect too. When you're driving out there on your own, usually sitting in fourth, and I've heard a few of the drivers actually saying it tends to be a little bit better in fourth around some of the areas, especially in the pack. But fifth definitely helps with the old fuel savings. So going to be interesting to see how that affects things tonight as well, see how the pack goes. Um, as we said, it is a bumper field out there. We are looking at a big race. It is always a big one here at Daytona, of course. It's a very long race as well. Yes, yeah, certainly is. It's uh, 200 laps, 500, ca uh, 500 miles, I should say, 500 Ks, but, uh, and a full um, grid with 43 cars that are taking place. That they had to fight to get in there um 20 top 20 were locked in from last year in the championship and uh, the guys outside that all had to race their way in in the duels which were held last night uh, a few guys got in a few guys had some bad luck stories but that's just the way it goes and it's the same in the real life one um so yeah everyone that's in there is earned their spot yeah that's it heartbreak for some but absolute joy for others and we are joined in the booth as well by mark johansson welcome back to the booth mark how you going Good, mate. Good. Uh, I've just been down doing uh, my normal thing and annoying drivers. And I can tell you that we have about eight or nine drivers. It should we go to a caution that are happy to come have a little chit chat with us. Yeah, you've press ganged them into the booth if they need to. That is what I love to hear. <laughs> <laughs> So always handy to have, of course, as you said, the duel went ahead. Um, there was one slight change with the duel, um, with the actual uh, qualifying for that, as uh, one of the drivers had to drop out, unfortunately. So Luke Georgeson has got in. Devon Stove having to drop out from the race, unfortunately. Luke Georgeson getting the lucky ticket to get into the race. So he'll be starting from the back of the grid. But after the dual races last night, that's going to be their starting positions. Of course, we did see Ruben Phelps take out pole position with Brad Allison on the second row, of course. So they'll be starting right at the front. And of course, that's always a good place to start a race. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the, it can be one of the safest places uh, out front. If you're leading, uh, you can't run into anyone. Um, but you can certainly uh, end up in the big one, though. But uh, yeah, as I said, it's one of the safer places to be. If you can get up in that top sort of three or four cars... It's not so bad. If you're back in the mid-pack, yeah, I'm, I, I don't want any part of that. I'm, I'm out the back. So <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see what guys do here. 
That's funny, isn't it? On super speedways, you want either right up the front or right down the back. Yeah, that's it. And and unfortunately, not everybody can be at the front and not everybody can be at the back. So, uh, like I said, it's going to be interesting to see what the drivers do here on these first couple laps, just to shuffle them way around. And usually it's pretty tame um, because it's not an official race. Uh, L&I racing is pretty good because being a league race. So uh, the guys usually give each other a fair bit of space at the start of these ones. Um, so hopefully we'll see a bit of shuffling around and then uh, settle in. Yeah, of course, the driver's very used to racing each other as well. It's one of the, the nice things about the league. But we have got a lot of rookies this season as well. So that's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Of course, the top 20 in points finishes for this race will be locked into the next one. Uh, we have the locking system for Ansgar just to get 20 cars through. And uh, it's going to be on points tonight. Just so if you do get sort of caught out in a bit of a wreck early on, you can still possibly make it lock, lock yourself into the next race. So... A little bit of an interesting change there rather than the top 20 finishes it's a top 20 in points so those lead laps uh things like that they could really help out tonight and just give you a little bit of an advantage to lock you in for fontana i think it is next yeah i believe so but uh yeah it all, it all starts now i guess uh, you start uh, accumulating accumulating them points now and uh yeah she's a long old season but as i said there's a, there is a little bit of a reward for it if you don't have the greatest season you still you still got something to work towards I think that's what will happen here today. Everyone will be just settled in, wait for that last ticket quarter of the race to, to really press home uh, positions, I think. Uh, like you said, Dave, everyone will settle down and, and want to get a good finish to, to move on and lock themselves in, give them the best, themselves the best chance to lock, lock in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, def definitely right. And... Uh... Obviously, you'll probably see a lot of green flag pit stops, so uh, keep an eye out for that because they can cause a bit of havoc as well because you're coming from 305, 310 k's an hour, about 100 or almost 200 miles an hour, right down to, uh, I think it's 80, I believe, about 80 k's an hour into the pit yeah. lane. So in a big group, it's uh, it's hard to navigate, but, uh, yeah, you can definitely uh, win or lose a race there too. Yeah, we, we seen that last night, didn't we, Carl? We're not so much the... Uh the the, uh, the the big presses but different pit stops and and ended up with two two groups in our in our duel that we call called yeah very much so and it is it is part of the strategy of course you want to be pitting with a nice group of cars so you can get that draft working with you but as Dave said you know these cars are very different they got different brakes this year as well about 20% more effective than last season and that has caught a few people out uh, in the races just because they, they people sort of expect to have to break a little bit earlier in the older cars and with these ones you can just break a tiny bit later but if you've got the bias set wrong it can really catch you out all of a sudden that back end can flip around on you so there are all these little things that are going to come into play tonight i reckon and we could see some interesting little results do we know what we're looking at for fuel mileage tonight dave um i just want to add to your brake thing as well because these cars do break pretty pretty efficiently the problem is when you come into the pit they're cold when you come up to the box they won't actually brake as good as you want when you're in that load speed they won't they're very hard to lock because they're, they're still cold brakes so um you want to be able to get a heat soak maybe on the back straight just ride that brake for a little bit um so they they can be a bit tricky to get pulled up here and I, I mean i know from experience you can just roll straight through that box but fuel wise i'm thinking it's uh, i believe it was about 38 to 40 laps or something like that they, were, they go a bit longer than the old cup cars um so yeah i think it's yeah around the 40 40 lap mark you know, it makes it an interesting one, of course, because 200 laps here at Daytona. That means we're going to be looking a fair few stops tonight. And as you said, a few of them are going to be under green, and that is really going to change things up. Of course, we've, we'll probably see the caution flag fly and people taking advantage of that. But I believe the practice session is just about finished. So the drivers will be gridding up shortly for the start of the Daytona 500 here on Performance E-Streaming, the Ansgar Daytona 500. Uh, brought to you by 24-7 uh, Sim Services, Affinity Construction. Um, thank you very much to our partners, of course. Uh, big thank you to them. Big shout out to all of them helping us get it through. And a big thank you as well to Matt Hunter uh, for getting these lovely, lovely graphics up and getting the stream and everything like that to you all. Uh, a lot of hard work done in the background from him. So we are getting ready for the race. What are your predictions, guys? Oh, geez. It's, it's hard to pick. You go, Mark. Oh, uh, look. I, I said it last night, and I don't. I really hope I don't put the mocker on him, uh, or on the two. I've got to go for either Ruben or, or Brad. I mean to say, 
Brad's my teammate in, in my league, so I definitely hoping he does well. And and Ruben's um, in a team of, associated with my team, so it's definitely a, a, a front row lockout and and a win for me. I think uh, Luke's on a bit of a hot streak at the moment too, so I'm going to go with the 43, if not to uh, to beat the 31 of Josh Micklemore. I'm going to go for Ray Yeager tonight. Um, he's been on a charge and been heading to the booth constantly this week, so I feel like we might well see him in the booth again. So let us start running through the grid for the Daytona 500. It's a big one. Let's try and get through this. So on the front row, it is Ruben Phelps and Brad Allison. Second row, it's Micklemore Foster. Third row, it's Martin and Carol Walden. Fourth is Traher and Jaeger. Fifth, we have Nankervis and Williams. Sixth row, Pearson and Hedersheed. Seventh is Dyson and Danny G. Eighth row, we have Schroeder and Russell. Ninth is Clark and Schultz. Tenth, we have Wellman and Neil. The eleventh row is Hoppet and Raymond. Twelfth is Urquio and Griffiths. Thirteenth, we have Knight and Court. Fourteenth is Skurlock and Yesberg. Fifteenth, 15th is Hobson and uh, Patton. 16th, we have Vickers and Button. 17th, Sheely Wilkinson. 18th, Jordan and Koch. 19th, we have Wally and Schultz. Jay, uh, Jay Schultz, of course. Uh, 20th, we have Spencer Morris. Then it's Paul Jackson, Riley Curtis, and at the back, Luke Georgeson getting through with that lucky ticket. Yeah, it certainly was a bit of luck involved there. He, uh, I think he had a bit of bad luck running the dual race, but... Uh... As I said, we want a full grid here, so when uh, Devin sent the message through, that was great of Devin to uh, give up his spot. Um, and then uh, yeah, George Johnson got in there. Yeah, very much so. And it's, it's a shame to not make it into the race, but uh, as you say, Georgeson got a bit unlucky getting taken out last night in the duel. So, uh, you know, it's, it's the thing. Sometimes luck swings both ways, and luckily for him, it swung in the right direction tonight. So he's in the race itself. Uh, so we are getting very much ready for this one to start. It is going to be a fantastic sound for the start of the race. I'll go quiet for this one as we get across the start finish line. But there's still a little bit of time to go. That pace car will be pulling in shortly. But we are going to hear 43 cars roaring away here in Florida for the Daytona 500 for Anne's car for 2022. It's going to be a long season, but away we go. is broken by our voices once more it is a good start for phelps and allison on the outside we've got two lines forming and you don't really want to try pushing too hard too early of course just getting into a nice rhythm right now is the important part for this race uh, if you go too fast too quick sometimes you can end up just getting a little bit unsettled and that can really cost you looks like most of the drivers have just stepped in position nobody's really looked at dropping to the back and trying to form a little breakaway pack yet but it is very settled as we stand yeah, definitely. Uh, it's a perfect sound to start. Oh, yeah. They turn a 520, sorry, 200 laps to go. We have a working lap too. So very, very, very early days here. As we can see, the the two um, pole sitters, front row sitters, are still just holding point at this point in time. I can see uh, as Ruben just actually, um, Bradley Ellison drops down in front of Phelps right now. So that actually releases Foster in that top line. So he's going to lead the top line here at the moment. He's got his teammate, um, JCW, behind him in the 35. Um, so we've got Two by two here, we got the um, Allison and Phelps, their teammates, Foster and Carol Walden, and then you also got the Mitch guys, Micklemore and Martin, they're lined up behind them. As yeah, that top not... line's actually got a bit of momentum at the moment. Yeah, I was just about to say, that top line as well has got the, uh, the other 
uh, Natari car of uh, Henshin in it as well, just behind Stevie Dub. And then just sitting back there is Danny G as well. So they're going to try and work together and work their way forwards a little bit to try and link up as many of their team cars as humanly possible, because uh, that always helps out in the series. It makes things a little bit easier when you've got your teammates around them. It looks like jumping down is Stevie Dub there. Uh, so Stevie Dub going down to that inside line. JCW is keeping the high line at the moment. I did hear a few drivers saying that that high line was a little bit easier to run on at some stages, but it looks like they've already dropped down Atari with Foster and JCW dropping down to that low line, taking that position now and linking up with each other. That's released Hedersheed on the high line. He's now in position one on that high line. Going to try and get a push forwards to work with his teammates. Will we see the Mitch boys try and break up a little bit so they can slot Danny G in with them? All a little bit of tactics here now for the race. Yeah, you can see there's only five cars in that first part of that top line at the moment. So uh, they're going to hang out there for a while, but they'll, they'll probably be a little bit slower, but unless they get uh, tidied up and they can sort of keep it nice and uh, clean and run a bit tighter, they'll, they'll work their way back up. But uh, that uh, Natari Autosport car, the uh, setup they got in there, it looks quick. Um, I know that for a fact. And uh, those boys are going to be hard to beat at this point in time. But uh, right now, just running their own little race here, got to the front, and now they'll settle into uh, to a rhythm. 15 just... cars separated by a single second at the... Wait, make that. Uh, make that 17 cars separated by a second at the moment. It is very close racing. I'm, I'm just wondering, Carl, if uh, Yvette and, and JCW did find that little bit extra that they, they mentioned they may be able to find last night and after the duel. Yeah, of course, it's it's an open setup this race as well, which does change things up a lot. Uh, of course, we usually run fixed setups through the season, uh, but being Daytona, it is open, so the drivers and teams are able to get their own setups, they're able to tweak them, able to make them their own, and that does change things up an awful lot. Uh, yeah. Just just a couple of messages quickly through. Uh, Ryan Barber's tuned in, in and he's uh, obviously he's going for Schultz because it's uh, Let's Go Schultz. Um, so if anyone wants to send us a message, to be on, I'm on Facebook watching the message and we'll try and get your message out. Yeah, that's it. It's uh, thank you very much for watching. We couldn't do it without you guys. And, uh, the reason we keep it going. Um, but Dave, the importance of that stuff is a huge one, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely is, mate. So I, uh, I don't want to say I had a hand in the, in the Atari setup, but anyway we'll move on but uh, yeah it definitely is uh, you want it you want to try and get it as low as you can and uh try and just shape it like a bullet like they say in daytona in the uh, days of thunder movie it's gonna shape him like a bullet that's that's pretty much it here it's just hold it flat and um you want to get as less friction on them wheels as, as much as possible during qualifying as well any sort of friction will slow the car down so it's literally just making it streamline as much as you can right oh. is not what you want at a track like this no, definitely oh. not. And you can see that big wing on the back. In the old days, you used to drop the rear of the car and, and it'll actually take that wing out of the um, the draft a bit. And uh, that actually helps. But I found it a little bit different this year. Trying to drop the rear and it would scrape on the uh, track bar. So, uh, yeah, different different approach, but same sort of thing. I was having a conversation last night with Brad and they, um, they said to me that they may not be the quickest, but over over a long run, over the course, they seem to be the um, yeah. I didn't didn't have a chance to talk to anyone else because uh, of uh, real life racing, but um, definitely Brad and, and Ruben and, and Jamie are all running the same setup, and they they're saying that their car is good out for a long run. Yeah, it's it's. What you mentioned there is a long run as well. So right now, Edward's going to be using a lot more fuel than those guys behind him. So being in this pack, you're still flat out at the front. You're holding that pedal to the board as hard as you can. And so you're using all that fuel with the guys behind. They're basically getting a free ride at the moment. So um, look for different varying strategies here as well for fuel because Edward can't come on his own. He'll have to bring his teammates with him when they do stop. So if he leads the majority of this first stint, uh, look for the Natari guys to all go in at the same time a bit earlier than everybody else. We've got a second pack sort of forming towards the back Matt Knight has dropped off a little bit from the main pack uh, so the from 34th down there's a little bit of a gap now and that's gonna make it a little bit tricky for those guys um, obviously once those packs start separating that can make it a little bit tricky as oh who was that just up in the wall uh, yes, there's a lap car I'm not sure it was but uh, uh, Jay Schultz there uh, just getting up just scraping the wall slightly 
as going a lap down as he fell off the pack completely. And that's one of the things with this new car, of course, once you're off the pack, the car just uh, just absolutely, it's almost like hitting a wall, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit more forgiving this one in regards to losing the draft. But yeah, once you do lose that draft, it's, just, it's, it's gone, nothing you can do about it. So he'll actually struggle, I reckon, to grab onto the back of these cars because if they freight train you on the inside and they don't check up at all and they just fall apart into it, it can be a bit hard to stay with them there. I'm just looking at the, uh, the weather, the, the, the wind, it's uh, swinging around a bit. It's uh, from the southeast east, and it, it's between two and two and seven mile an hour. So that's going to have a big effect on the nose. On, on, I think it's the back straight, if I'm not mistaken, coming from the southeast. Uh, that'll be a tailwind, I believe, a south oh, from, from yeah. the uh, back straight. Yeah, I can't remember which way the track is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're doing north, south, east, west. Just to work out. Yeah, the only reason I know is because I've been there. So, um, But yeah, definitely from the tailwind. Yeah. So south behind them there is Miami down that way somewhere. But you can see the, uh, can someone confirm me the Rubens Props team? What's, it, what's that? Is it Southern Stars? No, Ruben's uh, momentum, I think it is. Uh, okay, momentum. So those boys just made a momentous move. They went up to the top line. So you've got a three-car breaker out the front here, um, which is interesting. So with that set they got on, they can pull away. Um, I saw it in practice. You can um, actually hook up here and, and, and make a bit of a break. But, uh, yeah, you saw head of shot. He dropped. Oh, yellow. Are we yellow? We yeah, must be definitely, definitely yellow. So something at the back there because I didn't see anything. But uh, it is uh, Peter Wilkinson has oh got no. a huge amount of damage. Looks like a car has just gone down and clipped him, unfortunately. Um, so, so yeah, we've got. Uh, once we get there, we'll see the yellow car of Peter Morris. Play on screen. So let's bring this one up for us. So Wilco free wide, and uh, free wide. Oh. Uh, oh. There's a no. That's a net code because uh, Peter, uh, Peter Morris is actually there, so he's not right. showing on the replay. That's there. wild. So Peter Morris was actually in the middle of that one, uh, just not showing on the actual stream, unfortunately. So it was three cars wide, and then Peter Morris just clips the the rear of Wilco and spins him right up into uh, uh, who was that? Uh, Steve. It was Hoppet, uh, unluckiest man in Anne's car, Steve Hoppet there. Um, spun up into him nothing wilco or hoppet could do there unfortunately uh just looked like a some kind of net code issue for uh for peter morris unfortunately because yeah he just basically disappeared off the stream uh it was almost like he wasn't there and uh yeah just absolutely yeah yeah that's the first wreck of the night uh carl i know we're we're only 13 laps in but uh i've uh, been out of grab hold of no, I can't drag him up. He's he was going to come up, and I can't drag him up. So maybe someone else can drag him up. Uh, Pete Paul Jackson, the the pilot of two three one, he said he was happy to come up and have a quick chat, but I can't yeah. seem to pull him up. That's all right. We can uh, we can fix that one with one of our uh, with one of us will be able to fix that one up quickly. Just got to get some actual real estate on my screen. <laughs> Just have a look at uh, the damage on the, the 268 machine. It's, she's a little bit beat up at the front there on the driver's side. So they'll have to go in there and try and make some repairs and hopefully uh, get that thing back out there. But yeah, bad luck. Never want to be the first one here. As the whole field comes down pit lane, as you can see yeah. on the screen. And got a call. Big... Yep, sorry, Carl, you go. Welcome to the big Paul Jackson. How you going, mate? Yeah, pretty good. How are you? Oh, good. Thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's slow coming into pit lane there. Everyone's checking up a bit on entry. <laughs> How is the race going for yourself at the moment? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, fuck, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to bang in anyone. We've got the, uh, the, the pit, uh, pit bays right at the front because uh, the shared pit bays there. So, uh, um, yeah, not too bad start. Um, like I've jumped a few in pit lane there as well. Um, a few cars starting to drop off the, the pack there, so I was trying to push through a little bit. And um, yeah, just before that caution, the packs were starting to break away a bit there, so uh, I was thankful for that caution to come out. Yeah, that caution sort of came out just in the right time to save some of the packs there. Luckily, yourself not involved in that one. Um, and looks like you had a good pit stop as well. 
Yeah, uh, pit entry could have been a bit faster, but didn't want to pass anyone coming in. So I was about 30 k slower into pit lane. But um, yeah, it looks like the stop was pretty good there. I think because uh, it was a busy pit lane with everyone, um, that might have helped me a bit as well. So uh, good luck with the rest of the race, Paul. Thanks I've, for jumping up. I've, I've okay. just got one thing quickly. Paul, thanks for your purple wheels, mate. Love them. Yeah, I know you'd like that. That's why I specifically put them back on for you. <laughs> thanks, mate. And uh, have a good run, eh? All right, thanks. Well, interesting at the front here, um, Denny G. He was in front. Now he's going in. So I'm not sure if he rolled through the pit lane before and missed his box, maybe. But I'm just going back to have a quick look. But he's going down pit lane on his own. So he's going to go to the back here. He did go into his box. What happened? He missed it. Yep, completely missed it. So he just decided to keep going. So uh, first time through, he missed it. Uh, and I also saw his teammate, Jason Martin, roll straight through it into the next box. So I did mention those brakes coming into the box. It is a different animal this year. And he ran straight on through. So Josh is going to be left at the front on his own for a bit now after having his teammates in close proximity. But uh, Danny G just taking service there. Now he drops and he's going to be right at the back of his pack now. Yeah, I think Sorry, I think a few people get caught out because there are some double file uh, pit X boxes as well because they did reduce the pit base to 40 this season for Daytona. So uh, there's a couple of people that have to share their pit boxes. I was just going to say, do you know if anyone took tyres um, this early in the race, Dave? Um, at, with, I know, as we mentioned last night, it's not a high tyre wear track, but that little bit of a, a extra performance that you may get out of taking a set of tyres early you get a longer run and maybe you'll be able to stretch stretch it out a little bit more. Well, remember, yeah. uh, sorry, just remember there are eight sets of tyres, so they are limited on tyres. Uh, I can tell you Matty Ray did take tyres. Um, so we've got one car out there on fresh tyres. Everybody else, I think other... Uh, Michael Skerlock may have taken tyres as well. Yeah, I think it might have been a bit of a 50-50 split there, but uh, I know the Natari guys look like they didn't take tyres, so... Uh... They've, they've gone with that. I actually thought Denny G must have only took fuel as well to jump back to the lead, but obviously he just rolled through his box. But uh, coming around now, and we're about to go back green flag racing here. And it is Natari in the lead at the moment. JCW, Josh Carawalden leading away, getting ready for the green flag. Foster on the outside, Jaeger behind him, Phelps in fourth. And away we go once more for the race here at Daytona. It is Natari in the lead of both lines at the moment. But watch out behind them. There are a gaggle of cars wanting to get back into the lead of this race. Yeah, certainly you got Jaeger's in there behind him now. I think he's part of the Southern Stars. I can't, yeah, new, new, new year, new teams, new names. I can't keep up. So forgive me as I learn this as we go throughout the uh, race here. But uh, so far, the top line's got a little bit of momentum over the, the bottom line. But uh, yeah, no one's sort of making any drastic moves just yet. I think Jaeger's uh, with uh, Witcher, I think. Yeah, Pinnacle. Yeah. Pinnacle, yep, Mark's all over it. I'm glad one of us is. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's a troll. New paint jobs, new teams, new names. It makes everything so much harder at the start of the season. And then I was just about to say, Edward, if he gets clear, he should drop down in front of the 35, and he does so here. So, sorry, Carl, cut over you, mate. Oh, yeah, no, and, that's quite okay. <laughs> and I was going to say that the big change for this year is uh, I do believe Ed was in a Chev last year, Ed Foster. Wasn't it? Yes, and I believe changed, they were. Cha and they changed make. Yeah, yeah. they've uh, changed the make to the taxi. <laughs> Looks pretty quick taxi at the front at the moment, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I must admit they they are looking uh, very worrying this year. Yeah, definitely. As you can see them on another little three car break here. So we got sort of into that caution. It'll be interesting to see if they can sort of go out, go with it here. Josh will have to get on the back bumper, and they will be able to break away, but. Just, oh, as you can see, actually, I think that was Phelps maybe dropping down in the background there. Phelps or um, Alison, one of the two there, dropped back into that bottom line. So now the top line is being led by Stevie Williams in the DPR green, um, SuperX.com car. I'll tell you what, that, that Steve, Stevie Williams' car looks impressive this year. And yeah. Just jump over well, Danny G's had to serve penalty, I think, he's had to come in again. Because... Yeah, I know what that'll be for. It'll be for a closed pit lane. So you get up one opportunity to come in, and it closes, I'd... I've done that to myself in the Monday truck race, so that'll be a close pit lane. That'll be a stop and hold penalty too. Yeah, Jamie no Curvis as well having to face that as well. That is disastrous, but it is not the end of the race, of course. We have seen drivers come back from it. We saw with Scurley, oh, just a bit oh, back in the back. Geez, tell you Very what. close with yeah. uh, Wally there and Wally. Uh, Wally and can't 
quite see who that is with them. Um, Norman Clark there, Norman Clark and Wally just getting so close to each other there that they managed to keep it in a straight line. Good driving from both of them. Yeah, that was wild. That looked pretty uh, pretty gnarly from where I was sitting, but uh, yeah, not, not good. But as you said, Carl, it's never over for uh, Danny G. He's just gonna have to cop it now and uh, take the pill. But uh, in a truck race, I think it was 80 laps or something like that. I'll manage to get back on the lead lap. So he's got 200 laps to do it here. Well, not quite 200 anymore, but the day's never over. You just gotta keep fighting. Will he be able to do a scurly of last year, of course, the Bradbury approach of uh, going two laps down in the race and then having to win it at the end as everybody fell off. Uh, <laughs> it's never over until it's over, of course. That, that's right. So long as you're... I, I've, I've proven it myself. So long as you're within in that last 20 laps, it, it, if you're only a lap down, you can still come back, get your luck back and, and win a race on a super speedway. Yeah, that's that's no truer than here. Uh, I know Mark's done it before. He's come through the pack from about 15th pace or probably P45 or something like that and won it in one of the league, league races I've seen. So uh, it's definitely not over until you cross that line. No, and, and we say it's it's sometimes just down to luck. And, uh, you know, when, when somebody like me can get a decent finish at a super speedway, there's very much luck involved. Um, as a tradition, I have to mention that every year. Uh, we've got <laughs> Luke Cahair on the move at the moment, the highest place Toyota. Uh, not too many Toyotas out there at the moment. The Camry not favoured this year. You know, no. I said that all on looks, mate. <laughs> you got a, you got a tough-looking Camaro, you got a tough-looking Mustang, and you got a Camry. Just yeah, doesn't was, sound right, does it? <laughs> no, I was going to say, even even in, in, in my league, it's like 36 Chevs and 40... Uh, Fords, and then we've got five or six <coughs> Toyotas. So they're definitely not a favourite car. No, nah, yeah, it's all down to a bit of looks, and, and as I said, the Camry just doesn't sound exciting at all. But you see, now there's only four cars running that top line. They're still trying to come back, but uh, he's got Luke behind him. I think that's Josh Mickelmore leading that pack. Um, there's four, and there's another guy back there just trying to get onto the back of that one as well. Is that and the two Mitch boys there, I, I believe? By the look of it up on the high line, yep. Yeah. yeah, we're just looking a little bit further back. Uh, Aitor have started to better, they've got a second pack running at the moment. It's Paul Jackson in the league with Barry Neal, so they are a little bit further back at the moment. And those beautiful orange liveried cars. Um, so that second pack is formed up, and they're sort of sitting a little bit further back, just dropping off the pace. We saw this last night in the Jewel as well, but they just once you sort of get into that second pack, if you don't get it formed properly, you will drop off quite quickly. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a challenge. How do you pronounce the team name? I, 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 <laughs> I pronounce it quickly and I pronounce it Antora, so and I always pronounce it wrong. I, I had Ruben send me a uh, an audio file with the correct pronunciation. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Aotearoa Racing. Uh, Barry sent me the actual uh, pronunciation, and I still mess it up every time. Uh, as you know, pronunciation is not my strong suit. Uh, team Kiwi, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, those two two cars do look, and I have have done for the last three years. Always looked uh, very very neat and tidy. They have, and the lead pack is coming up to a pair of lapped cars right now. So they're going to fly up to these guys. It's Peter Morris and Peter Wilkinson at the moment. The two, two Peters in a line after that early instant, and these lead cars are going to come up on them extremely quickly. Massive pace difference at the moment. We're looking at 287 compared to uh, 300 and 312, 313, 314. We're going to have 315. We are 315 kilometers an hour for Foster there as he streamed past Morris. Um, that's the speed difference between these cars. You know, when you're in the pack working together, it is just enormously different. Now, what, what Peter is it on the outside there? What he wants to do is try and drop in on that high line behind that, that last car, but may, yeah, it doesn't look like he's going to have enough pace. They might be able to get a little bit of the side draft and get to the back of the queue, but he has got some damage on that locked-on 
uh, iRacing car, unfortunately. And quite a lot of damage on the front. He needs to get under the back of somebody to sort of get him going. Because uh, otherwise he's just going to keep falling back and back and back, unfortunately. Uh, not the debut he would have wanted tonight. His teammate, however, Tim Corner, is having a little bit of a better run. Uh, currently P18 in that lead pack at the moment. Uh, running up there just behind Lachlan Urquio. So, uh, Locked On iRacing, of course, the podcast gets your news and results from one of the Australian Aussie action for the online stuff. All the news and results are very, very useful to have. And, of course, they are broadcasting the Thunder Series this year on Wednesdays. Yeah. And the, the pack is uh, catching Jamie Nan Curvis this time too, so it's going to be a big difference there. It looks yeah, like Jamie, Jamie's going to stay high. So we're going to go three wide in to turn three as they go through two packs forming so three wide and that just unsettles the cars you see that second pack just getting a little bit wobbly as they get past and curvis there and just that aero wash just unsettles the car a little bit of course they are moving around trying to get some clean air on the radiators as well just to keep those cars relatively cool um because they do get a little bit warm it's not the hottest day out there today i think it's about 20 about 19 degrees celsius at the moment uh, air temperature 20 uh, sorry 33 the track temperature um, so it's not super hot, at least, and that's going to be a nice thing for those cars. Yeah, definitely. Dave, I've got a question for you. We're both uh, fairly fairly um, racy all the time and, and do a lot of racing. With these super speedways, a as a driver, when you're coming up on a lap car, where, where do you prefer the lap cars to go? Because um, it's kind of sort of an unwritten rule with uh, when you're getting lap to stay high. Uh, yeah, where def. would you where would you prefer the guys to go? The, I, to be honest, I think the safest place for them is to high. Um, and the only reason I say that is because sometimes they jump below that apron, they get on the flat, and if they don't realise it and they come up into the turns, that flat's not going to hold you and you're going to come straight back up in a pack. So for me, just get up on that wall, um, try to stay off the wall. But it, yeah, it's always a nerve, nerve wracking time, especially when you come up on that cars and you're too wide, that you're going to get through because a lot of the times the cautions can be um, brought out from actually passing lap cars and just getting that little bit of squealy up the top. If I make not as confident and, and competent up there, he can actually just come down and swipe you as you go, Poe. So, yeah, I'd, I'd rather him up the top. Yeah, I, I'm the same. I, I, I know you do a fair bit of racing too, Carl. What, what about for you, up high or down low? It depends how damaged my car is at the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, at least you're honest. <laughs> so now we actually um, almost all single file here. We've got a couple of lap cars back there on their own. It's only Jason Mart and, and uh, Luke Traher. Only two cars on the lead lap on that outside now at the moment. So they're going to try and work together. But um, I know those cars are fast. So let's see if they can make anything happen with a tandem here. It's not yeah, been done for a while. I think they were kind of hoping that maybe they could get um, Jason Martin's teammate Danny G hooking onto the back of Martin as they got past. Just could not get into the draft there and has just fallen back uh, quite quickly. So Danny G falling to the back of this pack right now. And being stuck out there in a two-car pack, it's not ideal. They're going to struggle a little bit. They need a few people to come and join them, hopefully, and just start pushing them forwards a little bit. Uh, or they need a little bit of a gap to form that they can slide in. Of course, the problem is, is if one of those cars slides in and the other car is just going to be left hung out to dry. Yeah, well, that's right. And and at the moment, they're hanging out there and they can just hold for now. They're not losing too much ground. They're not making too much ground because they've, uh, they're have they using the side draft of that pack. But, uh, yeah, if they want to get to the front, Jason's going to have to get on that rear bumper and maybe he can't get there. So Luke may have to just drag the brake a bit to, to break that bubble because I guarantee once he gets to the bumper, he'll be stuck on that bumper then. As you can see on board here now, you can see Jason's just right behind him there. Um, he, he'll be flat, Jason. He'll be trying to get to him. But, uh, yeah, there is just a bubble of energy or the dirty air behind there. So to try and break that on his own, Luke can actually just drag the brake, just tap the brake just to force it to close. And then once that car gets to that bumper, it, it's almost like you've got a trailer on there. It'll, just, it'll suck up there and stick there until you lift. Looks like we have Steve Hoppet up in the green room. So I'm going to just drag him down quickly and see how he's going. So I think he is very much out of this race after getting caught up in that early incident. 
Steve Hoppet, one of the unluckiest men in Anne's car, unfortunately, getting caught out there, no fault of your own. Uh, we'd much rather see you at the end of the race, but always a pleasure to have you in the booth, mate. How you going? Oh, yeah, mate. Yeah, not too bad, Carl. Good day, Mark and Matt. How you doing? Uh, DD's in here too, I see. Yeah, no, there's no luck in it, mate. No good luck, no bad luck. It's all about lowbrow, low IQ stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we saw the uh, cars get collected and just get flung up into the side of you there, unfortunately, and it uh, looks like your race is done. Yeah, no, no, mate, I'm losing all out of top end speed. Uh, whether there's some engine damage or not, I don't know, but... Uh, I could actually still see the, the, the front quarter on the left-hand side sticking up in front of the windscreen. So, it obviously not repaired properly. But, um, yeah, somebody obviously forgot to tell Peter Morris it's 200 laps instead of, you know, 20 or 30. So, you know, it's the way it goes. Um, how's Wilco? Uh, he is still out there, but struggling, unfortunately. A uh, bit of damage. He's just managed to pull up to the back end of Georgeson. Uh, so, he's got somebody in front of him to help out. But that car is looking a bit of a dog's dinner, unfortunately. Yeah, no, that's it. Um, I mean, I, I, I couldn't even get on the back of the draft, so the simple fact of the matter is that um, it's it's not worth struggling for three and a half hours with a car that's going to go a lap down every two or three laps. Um, you know, even even running solo, I'm about 10 to 15 kilometres an hour down at top speed. It's a waste of time. So, um, you know, these things happen. Unfortunately, Wilco's going to struggle until he starts to realise that you know, he's flogging a dead horse as well, but um, look, good luck to him. Maybe he can get it repaired enough to at least, you know, run around and finish the day. Look, that's it. It's, uh, as you say, it's, it's sort of not worth keeping it out there. Hopefully, though, we will see you in the future for some more cup races, Steve. It's always a pleasure to have you in the race. Hopefully, we'll see some better luck for you next time out. Yeah, no worries at all. Um, yeah, thanks to uh, you guys for the stream and Anne's car for running the event. But, uh, yeah, that's the way it goes. Look, yeah, I'm just... I'm going to take a deep breath and have a couple of ciders and watch the watch the stream and listen to you guys. So, look, thanks very much. And thanks to Edward and Anne's car for putting it on. And uh, I'll catch you another, in another round. We'll see you in the future, Steve. Keep yourself well, mate. Steve Hoppet there, unfortunately, <laughs> getting taken out. Uh, no fault of zone there. Just, you know, one of those situations. And as he said, you know, no point just dragging the carcass of the car around in those stages um it's always a disappointing thing i guess the only consolation is when it happens this early in the race at least you can go and enjoy a few ciders and you're sort of it's a little bit less heartbreaking when it happens towards the end of the race i think it hurts a bit more yeah i don't know if, i don't know if it actually has a level i think it's just <laughs> it's pure disappointment <laughs> no, no matter yeah. what it is, i think to be honest <laughs> yeah i was going to say it's daytona it's always disappointing to be out out of daytona whether it's first or first half middle or, or, or late <laughs> yeah yeah um i've just done some quick sums boys uh we should see start to see the next lot of round of pit stops in roughly 12 laps time so um maybe we're going to see uh, our first lot of green stops oh jason martin being left high and dry at the moment picture head jumping in to the low line Martin is on his own now. We're going to see that car struggling. I think Luke tried his best to try and squeeze Martin in, but nothing he could do there. Martin is now going to start dropping back and plummeting like a stone, I'd say. Yeah, but he's he managed to slide in. in. Yeah, so he's, uh, he got lucky there. He's stuck in there. But uh, yeah, Steve actually um, brought up a good topic there as well of uh, his speed. Like th There is a minimum speed out there too. I, I was trying to find it while you were having an interview with him, but... I can't remember the time, but there is a minimum time you have to make. To be able to yeah, 52, 52 seconds, I've been told. So 52 seconds, you've got to be able to produce a lap time. Otherwise, basically, you've got to put that car in a truck. Yeah, that's it. And it's you can keep it out there uh, as long as you, you know, as long as you keep it out the way. If you cause an accident, though, uh, that is it. You're going to get yourself a race ban and you're going to get a big slap on the wrist. But everybody is keeping well within those limits at the moment. The slowest car out there at the moment is... Uh, Luke George and Peter Wilkinson, but they are in 49 seconds, so they're well within the limits at the moment, so they are very much there. We've got a big bit of action going on a bit Just further down, that, actually. That backpack looks like they're actually catching the front pack. They were three and a half seconds before, um, but it looks like they're maybe making ground, so Benny G's just slotted in there as he, as he got lapped before, so he's he's able to hold it in there at this point in time, so maybe he'll be fighting someone in that pack for lucky dog, I imagine, but I think they're slowly making time on this front pack. They are. They were about five seconds back from memory, 
um, over the lead, and they've now dropped it down to about three seconds, four, three to four seconds. So they are catching. Uh, meanwhile, the other pack with Paul Jackson in the lead are sort of struggling a little bit. They're down. Uh, they're about 16 seconds behind the leader at the moment. So that third pack is falling back a little bit. Ooh. Big, ooh, big moment there for little, little, uh, yeah. Lachlan, uh, Ruben Phelps, sorry. Yeah, that was a that was a nice little save there. He got must have just got rubbed the wrong way coming off turn two, and uh, yeah, just got him a little bit sideways and caught it down onto the apron, but uh, was able to to live for no, to fight another day. But yeah, that was very close. Yeah, I'll just, just go back and have a look at that one, and it just looks like that car just at, there was nothing, no contact involved. That car just went on its own, and we've seen that a few really times. Yeah, it must be at the back of the pack again. I can't see anything at the front here, but. Hearing it might be Nathan Button, possibly. Yeah, Nathan back. Button is out. He's had a bit of contact with uh, Sheedy. Uh, so himself and Sheedy there. Sheedy just giving him a bit too much of a bump. So we'll go to the replay. So Sheedy just comes up a bit too much, too much speed on him, trying to do a bit of bump drafting. But he's got a bit too much speed going in there. And we'll see it on the exit of... We'll see it in a couple of moments. And he just gets pulled up, sucked to the back of Button. And then around they go. Just coming off the exit of turn two here. He gets an absolute flyer and just gives Button a bit of a nudge. And that's it. Button can't hold the car and around he goes. And we'll see it right now. Oh, easy to do. Yeah, you can see him just drop down and... And obviously those those bumpers have interlocked and just sent him straight to that wall. So it's a hard hard lick for uh, for Shitty there, but it's easily to do. It's easily done. Like it's it's funny. It's easy to push the cars. I feel like in the turns these days than it is the straights. Um, yeah, we, but yeah, we were actually talking about that last night. The um, the old centrifugal force and the that whole idea behind the uh, uh, oval big itself. shot. Um, it, you know the cars getting compressed in the corners. It seems like this new generation of cup car, it's a bit light on the straights, but when you're in the corner, you can actually manage a little bit more more, more bump drafting. Yeah, definitely. It feels a lot more secure. And, uh, there's guys are coming into the pit, so everybody will come in here. So far, everybody's hit the marks that I can see. I can't see anyone hitting reverse yet. Jason oh, Martin. Mitch, oh, oh, Mitch and, and Brad Allison. Yeah, actually, I just recall that as well. So good pictures there. Matt's providing us there, so you can see it all happening in front of you. So Edward's about to run the... Off pit road wins the race off pit road with JCW in behind him. And so I'm just, sorry, I'm just, just sorry. sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, you'll see a few cars just double stacking in the pit box. As I say, they've dropped it down to 40 stalls this year from 43. So a few cars have to share the pit box. And that does throw you out a little bit because you're basically driving inside of another car. And that just feels a bit strange. Yeah, yeah and what's strange is it goes, the, the last three cars on the grid will actually go to the front of that grid. So the, the last three actually are in the top three pit bays now as well. I was just watching that. Uh, Brad and Ruben both took four tyres too. So yeah, I, think it's, I think it's definitely time of the race to uh, throw a fresh shirt on. Um, they, most of them, I don't think, took tyres last time. So if they didn't take tyres last time, they definitely took them this time, I reckon. So if we're getting 40, right around 40 laps, 37 to 40 laps of fuel, uh, the next lot of stops should be around lap 80. Yeah, stay green. It should be about 80, yeah, I reckon. So um, if we did hear from JCW last night as well that the tyres were really dropping off after that first stop. So, um, so definitely around about lap, sort of, it's going to be pretty much tyres every about 40 to 40 or so laps. I think these guys are going to want them. They're just struggling a little bit with those outside tyres just starting to fall off a bit. So, um, everybody slapping on a new set now. Yeah, definitely. And another thing to think of, if you get to the bottom of that tank, uh, to fill that tank right up. Uh, it's the same amount of time as fitting a set of tyres. So if you've got to put a full tank in it, you might as well put a full set of tyres on it as well because, uh, yes, you'll uh, be able to move around a bit more. Yeah, you take tyres, but it just gives you a bit more confidence making moves, especially if you've got to go high and low and whatever else. Because I have seen these cars get loose in the turns with no one else around them. Just by jerking that wheel a little bit too much and that little low grip, they'll just turn around on you. Yeah, definitely. And, and the other thing is that then... If we get do get green green stops, do we see guys starting to take either lefts or rights? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely an option as well. Um, if you've got a green flag stop and you don't have to take a full tank, um, you can definitely take right side tyres. It will track 
differently on the way out, so you've got to be careful not to spin because um, it'll be like, like driving a tank. You'll have fresh rubber on one side and, and dirty old rubber on the inside. But, um, yeah, or, or like I said, go with none, and it's still you lose a bit of time on the exit, but uh, you save that time by not taking them at all. I just got Sebastian uh, sent, a, sent a message. Bump drafting plus eye racing net code equals drama. Oh, that's why we're tuned in. That's why we're here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that's why Daytona. She's the big granddaddy, mate. She's uh, it's a, it's one of a kind. The Daytona 500. So uh, that's what we're here for. A bit of entertainment. So uh, we'll strap in because we're about to go green here. I think the lights are out. Yeah, lights are out on pace car. So uh, he'll pull off to the left here, and uh, we'll get going again with the uh, Natari Spot cars up front, and uh, I think Hedershard's just in behind there too. Yep. So is it going to be Ed or JCW? I think it'll be the same thing. So, uh, oh, actually, to be honest, if I'm if I'm Ed, as the green flag drops, Edward just takes his time, gets up the speed here, slows that inside down, and uh, lets the guys go around on the outside. That's um, definitely a, a good team way to be, but no, it looks like Ed's... Uh, yeah, it looks like it may, it may, you may have picked it, Dave. Oh, man, that's just what I would do. I would just, just breathe off the throttle for a bit there. Um, down the back straight here, it will compact it. It's, there is a risk with it, but uh, it'll drop those guys down around the outside in front of him. So as soon as they get clear, I reckon they'll jump in front of him. And you can see it happening right now, I think. Yep. I, I was just going to say, because uh, I can't I can't run a lot there of Ant's car stuff, do, do Ant's car have uh, a certain speed that you can't drop under uh, with, with rolling around with the pace car? Like... Uh, we run, you've got to stay within five mile of the pace car speed. So you can't let that that inside line, if, you, if you've if got teammates to the outside of you, you can't, you can't slow up that little bit and and hold that, that restart back. Uh, yeah, I know, what you're trying, I know what you're saying there, but I think um, these guys at Ansco, they don't have that, but iRacing will take care of it itself. Because if, you, if you're on the outside, and if you jump, before the other guy does, and you, you think before the green flag, um, you will get a black flag. So it's not worth the risk. But uh, yeah, I don't think they do have a, such as a, a speed as such. The only thing we've got is just when it is the catching up to the pace car, you've got to keep within a set distance of the car. Yeah, you can't, you can't lag at the back or yeah. Yeah. In the middle of the pack. So um, I, I think a lot of a lot of leagues run that type of rule. So we got two. Have, two Sorry, we've got two DPR cars here working this outside line, so they're actually clear now, so they can drop down if they need to. We've got Jaden Russell in behind him, and I think Brenton Hobson. So a lot of teammates at the front here. We've got tandems of teammates on the top side. Um, so they're making a good push on the top side. So I wonder if they'll just they'll just stick with it for now and uh, just run the top line. But there's no reason to drop down if they're making pace right now. Yeah, and uh, the DPR swarm is absolutely coming. It's, uh, it's... say it. <laughs> they drop yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, um, and the, the fourth Natari car is back there behind uh, Ruben. So uh, they'll have all four of their cars up, up um, together shortly. I do believe the one on the outside is uh, Norman, Norman Clark. It is in, indeed with the green front end on it. Yep. So it's a little bit uh, a little bit of a teammate race at the moment. So we got the, the Hobson Mobiles on the outside. We've got uh, Ruben Phelps and his, his teammate there. I think that's Ruben. Um, and then, yeah, Natari and... Is that a Mitch car? There's a couple of Mitch cars back there, maybe? Yes, I think they're on the... All on the inside, on the outside, yeah. Yep, yep. So, teammates are, are coming into play here big time. Yeah, absolutely. And this this top line seems to be held on a lot better than the last time as the DPR guys get a good push here, though. So, uh, that's Pearson in behind uh, Daiso. And uh, those boys decided that they want to have a track at leading this race for a bit. We also got, uh, as I said, Jaden Russell there pushing. Uh, sorry, J Jaden Russell getting pushed by Brenton Hobson. Um, so those guys are fast too. We know that those guys are fast. As you can see, a bit of a breakaway pack. So they're, they're breaking away from the guys behind. I think led by Riley and, and Schroeder back there. And there's a, there is a car in between, um, which I think might be Aiden Schultz. It is Aiden Schultz. Um, just that's ninth place. So he's in the pack. Um, and I'd say Riley will get on the back of him. So. Interesting to see that these packs just split like that randomly throughout the race, um, whether it be from just a small check up or, or someone making a, a move and everybody else is sort of a bit cautious of it. But as soon as you sort of check up, you lose that pack. So it's it's very interesting to see how this race is playing out, Mark. 
Yeah, definitely. And and what is it? I, I, I can't remember the difference. If you lose that, that lead pack or you lose that car in front, you, um, three hundredths of a second or something, that really has an effect on the car and, and you tend to drop further and further back. Yeah, definitely. Like it, it, I, It'd be almost three seconds if you're on your own, um, a lap, but uh, that's worst case scenario. Oh, that, was, that was a nice little move to the outside. I, I missed who, who that was then. Um, yeah, I'm not sure who it is, but you can see the gap um, back there. It's 1.5 seconds at the moment, but uh, at the front, the uh, Hobson and, and Jaden Russell have actually moved down in front of the DPR guys now. And so uh, they've taken over the point of this race and uh, they've decided it's their turn to, to lead this some laps here. Yes, yeah. Uh, it, was sure blue, it was the blue Natari car that jumped up. That's who, who it was. Um, I'm missing the number. I think it's uh, Daniel, is it? Uh, might, have been, might have been there if it's an accurate looking car. I don't know he jumped yeah. out of the line. Yeah, um, it was. Yeah, you were uh, right, David. It was Ed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he's he's Luke, uh, Luke Trahair there as well, just off there. So he just had a big moment, just dropping below the line. He got very close. Yeah, I think we got a may have a replay there. I'm just watching there. Yeah. Yeah, so Ed was just trying to, looks like Ed was trying to get down to that bottom line, and Luke probably given, could have given him a bit more space, but. Uh, I did it at this stage of the race and sort of just forced Luke down there, got a bit scared and uh, no real big drama. Uh, they both they continue on to uh, play on the end. Yeah, no harm, no foul, no damage to the cars, that's the thing that's important. But they uh, that would have been a moment where they'd have taken a tight grip of the steering wheel. Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially entering a turn, you don't want to be down there because uh, if you get to that flat and you're down there too long, it'll just put you back up in the defence. So we have... Uh, what is it? 38 cars uh, still on the lead lap, um, and then the, only three cars one lap down. So uh, those three got lap cars that are down, well, the three cars that are down a lap, just need to play the patient game and and try and stay out of trouble, and and they could end up back on the on the lead lap. Um, at current, Jamie Nankervis will get the lucky dog if there's another another caution come out. Yeah, and uh, we've got 20 cars covered by a, a second and a half as well. So, you know, that, that pack is absolutely as close as you can get at the moment. 20 cars within one and a half seconds of each other is uh, is really decent. Uh, it's, it's a fairly tight gap, isn't it, really? Yeah, definitely. And we've just worked lap 50, so that's a quarter of race difference done distance, I should say. And just so people know, top top six cars at the moment are Chevs, and you've got three Mustangs, and then one Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> I that's not the only Toyota out there. The <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, we've got Team Kiwi running the Toyotas as well. <laughs> yeah. We've got a couple of Camrys in there representing, of course, and we know that at the end of the day, the Toyotas will come out on top. Uh, go Toyota. <laughs> Oh, what a feeling, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, tell what car I drive, can't you? <laughs> it's, uh, 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 oh, Dave, you're in a Chev, aren't you? Uh, I'm in the in a Mustang, mate. Oh well, we're, we're all we're all going to be end up fighting in the booth here. <laughs> One of <laughs> yeah. each. Oh, I'm Chev. I'm Chev. Carl's Toyota. And, yeah, you're the taxi. <clears throat> <laughs> I think I'd be like one of the only Toyotas out there most days, but uh, it's a good feeling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have, of course, Jane Russell and Brandon Hobo Hobson in at the lead at the moment. And, of course, that's good news for Mitch Motorsport because we know that Synergy and Mitch work together well. So if Mitch can work their way up there, they could get a bit of an alliance formed up. Then it's the two DPR cars of Daiso and Pearson behind them. Then we have Batari. Uh, so it is very much a team game at the moment. Lots of team cars in a row, uh, which is always nice to see. Um, but they're, they're sort of in that stage of just working together, getting it set up for the rest of this race, because we've still got a long way to go. Yeah, definitely. I'm just I'm just watching um, on on the uh, live. You, you can see Brad there trying to drop back to try, bring 
bring Ruben up with him. I actually think now Ruben's got back in front of him. So the the team cars are getting split up a little bit in that top top ten. Yeah, you can see just as well that high line is absolutely abandoned now. There is only Norman Clark and Maddie Ray there. Is, oh, who is that off the back of the pack locking up? Um, who was that? Uh, Luke Lopinacchio. I think it's some kind of mechanical, uh, some kind of technical failure there for Lockie. His car has just locked all four tyres up. Um, just out of nowhere, all four tyres locked up. So obviously brake pedal's gone. I'll um I'll I'll duck down and see if I can get a get a quick uh, update with him. Yeah, trying to get a replay up here, yeah. but uh, yeah, it looks like something's failed there and had to lock all, uh, all tires up. So he's done well to uh, keep that thing under control and not only cause any yeah. damage to himself or anyone else in that matter. It sounds like his pedals absolutely failed because that car was just revving and the uh, the tire all four tires locked up. So I'd say that was the pedals failing. Yeah, he's got a slow motion replay here. So he's just cruising around at the back of this pack here. And then all of a sudden, he had full pedal, full throttle, full everything. Okay, guys, I just found out what happened. He had a technical issue with his wheel. He, his wheel turned off and, uh, yeah, a glitch. And he's, he's uh, that's got, amazing. Yeah, he's got it back going. So he'll, he'll, he'll get back into the race. And... That's actually amazing that he didn't hit anything or anyone else for that matter. That's crazy. And, and oh. Lucifer, you can see the pack there just come past him on the outside. That's crazy. That's wild. It's... That's the last thing you want to happen at this Tour de Race track. Yeah, yeah, very lucky there indeed. And good situational awareness as well to jump straight into, uh, get a tow as quick as possible, um, get that car out of the way and just, you know, get going again. Very nice work from Lockman. Yeah, it looks like he didn't actually have to tow. I think no, he, he got it reset it going, yeah. on the apron, so uh, he's back in this race. But yeah, that, that would have caught his attention. Uh, and especially the guys behind, they wouldn't know what the heck was going on there. But that, that's that's probably the wildest moment on the race and somehow survived. <laughs> yeah, it, I'm pretty glad. Oh, it's Norman oh, Clark. That's a huge oh, that's moment. Norman. Yeah, you got that little push off the exit or whatever they happen, whatever's happening off the exit. They're getting nice and light and loose there off the exit of turn two. It's, yeah, it's, it's almost like a snap, um, and it's happened, we've seen it happen in the trucks and the Xfinity this, this week, uh, as well as the, um, as well as a couple of the practice races, almost like, uh, it's almost like there's a slight bump or a slight different camera, or just there's something on the, sort of, almost the exit of turn two, I think it is, uh, it's, it's, it's two or three, but it's one of those corners, and it just snaps the car around, and it's happened a few times, and caught people out from nowhere and it just it absolutely catches and has it from nowhere um really really weird little thing that's been happening yeah it's actually it's good to see because you see that sort of stuff in the uh, real life stuff as well so uh for whatever reason they're getting loose off them turns as they come off the banking and uh just getting light in the rear and that that's what happened there i just went back and had a quick look and yeah there was no one within a meter of uh of norman there just got loose on his own so yeah. good luck, get a good little save there and uh, continue on but it has split the pack up a little bit more again dave i can't remember whether it's where, where which one it is but I, I last time i i walked that pole line um <laughs> there was a, a a fair bit of a gap in between those yellow lines like the height sorry height difference on the apron and the track itself yeah, so, I believe. Yeah, I believe those yellow lines are on different levels. So I think yeah. the, the, the inner ones on the flat, and the upper ones actually on the banking. So banking. That, yeah, that black line is the seam. So yeah, if you sort of get on that, yeah, it'll just unsettle that car. Just wait, it, lift a tire off the ground, and then you'll find yourself in a lot of trouble. Like one of the other things we were talking about, me and Mark last night, was just the the new car, new um, the new cup car. It's a little bit lighter on the old steering as well. It doesn't quite give the same feedback as the the old heavy lumps that we used to have, uh, and that's sort of been something that a lot of drivers have been struggling to get used to. Yeah, definitely. I uh, I sort of counteracted it, and with um, the settings available in the, in the i racing. Um, set up so I'll just put more um, force feedback into it so I normally on every other car I run about 10 uh, whereas I bumped this one right up to 30 I dropped it back to 25 so I think I'm at 25 but just to get some sort of feeling because yeah they do feel very light on the steering yeah that just it just seems like um 
Oh, I don't, it, 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 there's no, no real. You can't get a feedback on on what the car's doing unless you you really turn that force feedback up on the wheel. Um, I know with the Fenatec, I've turned the uh, fine tuning up on the Fenatec in the Fenatec um, app to to get some feel back into the car. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So there there are options available to help with it. Uh, to make it feel a bit more creature friendly, I guess you could say. <laughs> but um, you just have yeah. to remember to turn it down when you jump in one of the yeah, old that's cars. Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if you jump in an Indy car, mate, she's going to rip your arms out. <laughs> oh, I, even a V8, like if you do a V8 yeah. race, it's like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And especially for those folks that can afford the DD Direct Drive. Oh, oh we're around with Norman Clark. Yeah, Norman Clark has been caught out again. So do we stay green, though? So it's it's gone to the apron. Wow, yeah, that, that was a weird one. He's gone into Ruben Phelps, I think, as well. Oh, He's no, the pole sitter. Phelps. So, the pole sitter yeah. is damaged. He, he, uh, Norman's, we... Norman's in the pit. Yeah, yeah so he's, far, he's... Just, I'm just watching that again. So we'll go for the replay of that one. And it just yeah, gets I think it's the same. High, same issue, I think. Mean. Yeah. It, so he comes off turn four here. Actually, we're, we're in a lapse time. Uh, we'll get around there. But we, we do want to see this replay because it's... Uh, it's definitely uh, a noteworthy replay. Um, so he's just minding his own business here, and um, he's just going to cruise around here. Out of turn four, he's just going to get loose um, on the high side too. He was on the, he was on the outside of the car, I believe. And yeah, Ruben Phelps, nowhere to go. Innocent victim. So we're coming down the back straight now. We're going to enter two, three, in, turn three, I should say, and then uh, yeah, right on the exit, same deal. Just got loose on him here. So you see him just go up the track a bit here. So he's sort of just floating around there. Uh, and then as they come around here to exit, it's, there it goes up the track. Too much wheel on it, bang, and just got loose. Same deal. And it's in the ribbon, unfortunately, a bystander. And uh, actually makes fairly hairy contact to the inside wall as well. So very hey, interesting there. It was almost like he was, you know, he'd sort of gone up into that high line and Phelps was getting past, but then he lost it just on the sort of, on that exit bit. It just, that car just floated around almost. Yeah, was, so... Obviously, the car's loose, and maybe he had a lapse of conversation and went up the track and maybe just pulled that wheel, pulled the right hand down, or the left hand down, I should say, yeah. a little bit too much, and it's just brought that back around. But uh, I was also yeah. going to say, Dave, maybe he, because he, he did get up above that, that, uh, the white, um, broken line the up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, and also, we, we, with eye racing, it does simulate marbles up there. So maybe. No, at, like he may have just been not a hundred percent on the on the gas, and he's put his foot down. So the yeah. and the marbles may have caught him out, like in real life. So I, I just went back and actually had a bit of a look on board as well. So it just it just lifted off in the mid corner, and it just floated him up to that high line. He just put his foot back down, and it just spun the back up. Um, in no sort of input on the wheel from the look of it. It was just literally that back end has spun him around. Uh, so really, really weird. It's just, as I say, these new cars, there's still a lot of things that you have to get used to. And in a race like this, you know, it's a long, hard race. You're going to find things that you've not come across before in some of the shorter races, I'm sure. Yeah, well, that's right. And you know what they say, mate, a loose car is a fast car. So uh, to go fast, you've got to have a little bit outside your comfort zone as well. So that could be a bit of a case there. And also um, the, the updates that have been coming, that the cars have been changing weekly almost with this new Gen 6. But yeah, it just it's very interesting though it happened. He had the same incident, not five laps or less before. So uh, whatever whatever it was, I think it was the same issue and he was just, just getting loose. Whether he, he didn't change tyres at the last stop, he's saving grip, uh, saving um, tyres maybe. But uh, yeah, whatever, for whatever reason, it is, it's a loose race car at the moment for Norman. From yeah. what I can see, it was tyre changes as well. So he was on fresh rubber. It was all all the same as everybody else. It just just that thing of catching him out, unfortunately. Yeah, and there you go. It, Twice in three couples of laps. It can happen to Norman, one of the more experienced drivers as well. It's you know it's very steady hand Norman as well. It's one of those drivers that tends to be pretty steady in a race. So yeah, definitely. And I saw it actually happen to Riley last night. Um, he said it was because he broke, mm. but um, same sort of thing happened in his duel. He he sort of went to miss a lap car and. Just swerved a little bit, and that was it. She got loose, and up into the wall he went. Yeah, of course, different aero packages as well this year, so you've got to wonder if maybe, you know, sort of running slightly different lines, especially on the high banking with a um, diffuser and stuff like that, 
it could be just changing things up a little bit and it will just change especially the, the diffuser and underfloor sort of um aerodynamics and grip you know when you get up on a banking when you change that sort of camber of the car and all of a sudden you get slight different airflow underneath that could really change things up and that could be possibly one of the reasons why these cars have been a little bit funny on the exit of some of these corners yeah definitely and speaking of changing out there's a bit of a changing of the guard lately well not lately but probably half race distance as as of what we're at now is we got edward Foster. he's back there you can see him on your screen there leading the pack here he's got wally i believe is in behind him leading uh, that martin, pack. Sorry. sorry jason martin so the mitch cars they were all sort of all together there they've made mistakes throughout the day they missed pit boxes um and they find themselves a bit out of sorts at the moment and same with uh same with the natari guys so there's two guys still up in the, the front pack but norman's obviously found a wall at some point and then uh yeah it was shuffled back there so uh easy running to start with but now they find themselves uh yeah trying to fight back into this race yeah, yeah but has it has it done that on purpose like you know yourself dave he he get, tends to get up the front and then he drops back and then that last last half of the race he he, he comes forward again yeah i can I, I can understand that but um I think with the Daytona 500 and the way these guys are single file, there's no reason why they would drop back. You'd have, you'd want to be up that front pack for sure. Just jumping back a little bit, we've got the third pack, Michael Schroeder with Michael Skellop, of course, Skellop with the uh, the amazing paint livery on the front of his car, uh, the beautiful face of Mr. Skelly. <laughs> um, Philip Wally just in behind him as well. So Schroeder is going to be getting a fantastic look of Skelly's face in his mirror, which is, uh, you know, probably not the best thing through a race. I mean, you'd, you'd probably get a bit tired about after about three or four laps. Yeah, he's got the he's got the separator all over the rear end of that thing at the moment. So uh, I don't know whether he's enjoying it or uh, or hating it. We'll have to we'll have to ask him after, as you can see, right up the back there. So you got riding on board with the guy behind um, Skelly at the moment, so you can get a good good view. <laughs> yeah, good view of the oh, mini I, I know. I, if I seen that face coming towards me, I'd be getting out of the road. Have a look at the, the little, <laughs> there's a little donk, mate. Little donk on the rear. <laughs> the old handlebar moustache. It's uh, you know the trademark of Mr. Skelly. Uh, but great to see him, and uh, look, he's hoping for a strong season as well this year because he had a really good one last season, almost taking out the uh, the crown, of course, with Darlington. Uh, Daytona and oh, oh reckon, we reckon, got a wreck at the front. Traher into, into somebody there. I couldn't quite see it, but we've got a caution out. So Luke Traher into the 42 of. Is that Lachlan? Yeah. That uh, Lachlan and Okio. So Okio's luck has run out there. Oh, just about to say, uh, there was a big movement there because Ruben Phelps actually just went a lap down. He was on the apron. So whether or not. The guy Ooh. saw that and, and panicked, but... Yeah. Um, uh, Traher's just got sucked up to the back there, so Traher gets... We're going to jump onto a replay the here. Uh, thanks so, to Matt Hunter, our director. So Traher gets a big jump up into the back of Jaeger, and there's just nowhere to go. Uh, that was dicey stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll see that in a moment. But yeah, it looks like uh, Traher got caught out oh. by the draft. He just got sucked yeah. up. So uh, yeah, right into the back of Jaeger. Yeah, so you'll see here, you'll see the 42 get a massive push up to Traher. He sort of reacts, reacts late to it and has to sort of check up a little bit. And and the 42 is just straight into the back of him. So um, they were they were going for a power run there uh, and just stepped on their own toes. Yeah. So. Uh, Phelps was down on the apron. Nothing, nothing wrong with that at all. So it was, it was more so just I think Traher just getting caught out. Yeah, just very. Yeah. The rest he got sucked up to the back of Jaeger, and then Okio just doesn't quite move it. Yeah, and, and that that jink to the right from Traher has obviously just slowed him momentum down enough, and obviously the forty two running at full pace straight into the back to the, the forty three, and then they hook Jaeger straight into the fence there. So Jaeger's gone for a big ride there. So. Unfortunate for uh, Raymond Yeager, really the innocent victim there. Yeah, the, the curse of the commentators are paying off quite well tonight so far. Uh, that's uh, that's two of our favourites out. Yeah, so, I'll tell you what, there's not much in it. Oh, actually, I don't know if you can get a replay, Matt, up, but have a look at the job that Gary Wellman does to miss Yeager here, mate. Pretty amazing that he didn't get caught up in this, this wreck. 
He's gone for a wild ride, locked it down, didn't hit anything, and managed to survive that somehow. That was crazy. And Wellman has got some uh, past pedigree on the super speedways as well. We've seen him have some uh, take his first victory in Ansgar, of course, at, I think it was Dega. Yeah, um, so you can see him on the replay here. He's up the high line there. He's just cruising along. All hell breaks loose in front of him and somehow he stays out of it. He's about to clean Raymond up here. Uh-oh. Just gets it down there, gets it loose, gets it sideways, locks it down, doesn't hit anything, oh. and lives to fight another day. <laughs> Very well done from Wellman. Yeah, absolutely. That's good. That's good driving. That's good heads-up driving. Saw and, what was and, in front of him, made the moves he needed to make, and, uh, yeah, as I said, locked him down. And what else is impressive is he, he's got on the ga grass and then got on the gas, so he's lucky he didn't loop it around himself by on that grass. Yeah, absolutely. Good job there from uh, Wellman. So, as I said, he lives to find out. I think he's on the lead lap too. So, that was that was full position. He wasn't sort of just hanging out there. He was he was racing with them guys. So, um, you can see a couple of guys come down pit road there. I'm not sure if the leaders are staying out. A chip in uh, track position. Everybody's everybody's come into pit line. Okay, I missed that. Um, all the so yeah, replays. So, yep. Yeah, they've all come in for that. That'll be the lap guys going into the into the pits. I'd say. And uh, Dyson has come out in the lead with Pearson behind him. So they've managed to jump the Synergy boys and get ahead there. So nice work in the pit stops for DPR. They're going to be paying their uh, their pit, pit crew a couple of extra hot dogs tonight. Definitely. And it looks like the pace car lights are out. So we're going to go racing here again. We'll, uh, thanks to Matty for breaking in that those replays there. Uh, sometimes it can be difficult to get the replay, but we've got everything we need there. And... Uh keep the uh, viewers entertained and, and catch all the action. So that's great. Thanks, Matt. Of course, one of the changes this season is there's one less uh, one less lap on the pace car as well, isn't it? I believe so. That All of a sudden, they're going quicker. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if I reckon done something there, but they just they definitely do, do feel quicker, the, the uh, cautions now. Yeah, it used to be four laps, and now it's three, I think, from memory. So it's, it's great, nice. Great to... invention. <laughs> yeah. Nice to, nice to have one less lap under caution because, uh, yeah, it makes our life a little bit easier. <laughs> now, what do they do here? you got DPR. Do they do the same thing that Atari did where uh, Dyson just holds up the inside line that appears to get across and sacrifices the lead just so they can get lined up and try and command it? Or do they just hold both lines up and leave both lines? It'll be interesting to see what happens here. The thing I'm interested in is just behind, you've got Synergy, you've got Mitch Motorsport, you've got Atari, all in group for Aetora as well. They've got a lot of cars. They've got a lot of teammates around them. They could try and link up quite well here. So DPR's got to be a bit cautious of this restart, not to let uh, any of those other teams get through and get them to run away. Pace car pulls in. We are on lap 72 of the Daytona 500. And it is Dyson leading the way. Pearson gets a nice run off that high line. And he's going to be dropping down in front of Dyson relatively shortly, I would say. There down he goes. he goes. Right in front there, the red-flavoured DPR car gets in front of the orange-flavoured car. Now, we've got uh, Jane Russell just on that high line with Aiden Schultz behind him. Aiden Schultz working his way up through the field nicely tonight. Um, yeah, certainly. That's a good job for Aiden up there. So he's going to try and push Jaden Russell to the point here. Um, Edward Foster, obviously, with that caution, gets him right back in this pack. So he's got a few teammates around him as well. Yeah, of course, losing one of their one of their players in Norman Clark, unfortunately, but they've still got three cars out there and three cars in the top of the pack. Uh, but saying that, so have Mitch Motorsport. They've got their they've got two cars in the form of uh, of Mick Micklemore and uh, Martin there, and then of course, as I say, Jaden Russell and Hobson as well. We know that those teams work together, so they might try and link up and see if they can Ooh. do something. Angel's running a little bit higher. Yeah. Just manages to save <laughs> almost, that one. Almost took a three right there. I thought he was going to try and uh, put Jaden Russell through the middle chute right out the back there, but uh, got back in behind him. So that would have been hairy if he had it done. Got right outside him there. There's Jaden now not comfortable. Try to move down. Oh, not enough room for Aiden. He's going to have to... No, he's committed That's to the middle now. He's, he's got to go back through the chute now. He's, he got left out there. He needed to commit or not commit. He's, he's got he's gonna get half, half there. in there. He was yeah. sort of questioning whether to follow him or not. And, uh, yeah, got put back there. But he does drop back in behind Martin now. So it doesn't go all Barry. the way to the... Yeah, Barry Neal just being an absolute gentleman there and just letting Schultze into that position. Um, very, very polite driving there. Yeah, it was always going to be close. So I don't think... I'm not sure if Aiden was ever clear. If he came down, he came down. I was trying to get clear. At the very last minute, obviously, wasn't still. And... Um, 
yeah, the head of shot, it well within his rights, he just went right around him. Yeah, great situation awareness there by Schultz just to, to not go down when he did because that would have been an almighty wreck, especially up at <laughs> yeah, the front. So, absolutely, oh, I think he would have been struck off the Christmas card list for about uh 40 odd drivers. Oh, and to be definitely. honest, it was going to be in front of Neil Pearson, and I'm not, I'm not sure Neil's ready to cut anyone a break just yet. <laughs> <laughs> No, we know Pearson tends to race a bit hard. He's uh, he, he's he's not one to to ease off too much. Pearson, he's one of the harder drivers out there, and uh, yeah, I, I don't think he was going to ease off on that one. No, definitely not. <laughs> and there's only so much easing off you can do when you got uh, what have we got? Twenty eight cars right up his uh, up his bum behind him. <laughs> <laughs> nice save, that Dave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I know. So, uh, I that. I was going to say, I don't know if Matt's got the uh, beep button there, has he? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He just got the big pause and after I started to say it, but it's all right. <laughs> we'll get away with that one. Paul's already managed to get us demonetized. Yeah. So, you know, he's done well. Um, yeah. So, 31 cars, I think, in this pack at the moment. Uh, maybe actually a couple more. So, uh, about 33 cars at the moment in this main pack. Um, it is a very long line of cars, and uh, yeah, that would have been a big wreck if that had happened. Absolutely, I want to see how Ruben fared after all that. Does he did it? Because I believe he might have still been a lucky dog. So, just trying to see. Yes, yeah, so yeah. he's back on the lead lap. No, he's still a lap down, Ruben. Yeah, um, he is. He's actually not in the lucky dog spot anymore. So, right now, Gary Owens a lap lap down. And he's the lucky dog uh, candidate right at this point in time. Yeah, one of the drivers. I sort of the hit worked out for was Lachlan Oakley. He's managed to get back onto the back, even though he's got that damage. So um, his luck is uh, it's been a bit up and down, of course. Uh, that technical failure, uh, that could have been the end of his race. He managed to get it going again. Um, a little bit like full metal racing when you kick the car a couple of times and all of a sudden it comes back to life. Uh, so that's one of the, the fun things in sim racing is you still have technical failures, but they're just a little bit different to the real world versions. Yeah, it's been a bit of an odd race, hasn't it? A few... few oddities uh with the Lachlan Urquio sort of locking up there uh Norman Clark getting loose um there was a few others there it's been a bit of a strange one we haven't actually gone a full tank of fuel yet at green flag racing so uh it's keeping everybody in the in the game at this point in time uh, which makes it interesting for us as well yeah we've not really had that long green period that we were kind of expecting we were sort of talking a bit before the races we often do and we're sort of saying probably see a couple of cautions early on and get a nice big long green stint until the uh, the madness of the last 20 laps of the 500. Um, I've not really seen that. It's been very broken up. It's been that sort of cautions at sort of opportune times for stints, really. Um, everybody taking free stops so far, the main group taking free stops. Of course, a lot of drivers only taking two sets of tyres, so they still got... Um, uh, seven they still got five sets remaining um but a couple of drivers that took those tires early will only have four sets remaining so that can pay that can either pay off later in the race or it could come to bite them in the behind uh, that's always one of the big things in the cup races of course you do have that tire limit and uh if you, if you get to the end of the race and there's that caution and uh, everybody gets fresh tires and you're stuck out there on the old ones that could really hurt you Definitely, and I just want to point out, uh, I can see him in the outside line here in front of Ruddy May, um, Luke Georgeson, the man who uh, got in by the skin of his nose on a, on a late departure from uh, Devon Stowe, so he's worked his way up into the top 15. Oh, we've now. got a caution. We've got a caution and... Oh, geez, somebody... they're checking up hard on the back straight in the pack. That's what dangerous was... to do when the yellow comes out. Uh, that was a big moment as, oh, it's Danny G and Button. Button's got into the back of Danny G. And a huge accident for Button, getting into Lachlan Oakrio as well. Um, so that was a big one for Nathan Button. I think he just got a bit too close. So we're jumping to the replay now and we've got a bit of a better look at this one. So a bit similar, he just gets drafted up to the back of Dan G and then loses the mid corner. So we'll see that now. Oh, yeah, very odd that one. He sort of dropped down to the apron there. Um... So, yeah, he just gets up to the back of Danny G and then he, he lifts off and actually Lachlan Oakrio gets into the back of Button. So yeah, I think Lachlan those... just gets sucked along a little bit, similar to that one we saw with Luke Traher, actually. Um, yeah, it's just... very hard, the car in the middle. Like, if you're pushing the car in front and the car behind you touches you, 
that happens nine times out of ten. So that's all that is. It's probably not enough awareness from Lockie there to see that uh, he had pushed that car right up into the back of Denny G. And once you're in that zone, the guy in the middle is almost a sitting ducky. Sort of just it'll just freight train you. Yeah, that was a unfortunate incident. Now, of course, they've done ten laps since the last caution. Uh, are we going to see them all jump in for some extra fuel now? That's the question. So we'll keep an eye on the leaders and uh, will we see a few people doing the old dummy down or are we going to see everybody jump in and get that extra it, 10 laps of fuel? Honestly, it, will be, I... it will be a good uh, question. It doesn't look like it. Yeah. But here they come. They're going to yeah, take every yeah. opportunity to get fuel. So they'll just top these tanks up. They won't change tyres. Um, you might get some stay out just to get up into the front of the pack. The guys have been running at the back all day. They might have had enough up there. They just want to change it up a little bit. It's 10 laps difference, though. That's the problem. So if you don't do what the field does, you'll be on your own when it comes time to uh, take a green flag stop. Looks like Sheedy has stayed out. So Wade Sheedy is going to be the leader of this race. He'll get that bonus point as well in the 009. And uh, newcomer to the Cup Series, of course, Sheedy debut tonight. Um, and uh, one of the rookies out there. Quite a few quite a few rookies this season. The Rookie of the Year is going to be a quite a... Quite a, a Big battle, I reckon. So it's going to be an exciting one for that one. Um, at the moment, as I say, Wedgie in the lead of this one. He's going to be starting from the front of the pack. And uh, that can be a bit of a scary place to start. And uh, it's not always easy when you're sort of in a new league and driving some drivers that you've not driven with too much before. You sort of you don't know how it's going to go at the restart, do you, Mark? No, definitely not. Um, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of influx in, in drivers in in several leagues we we run in, and it's like, mm, can we trust them or, and and that that just time trust comes with time, you know. There's, there's a lot of us that race against each other, and we all know how each other drive, and and we just play that patient game because we know that uh, he's going to go do do this or that driver's going to do that. And it's just patience and, and respect with each other. Yeah, so it's that thing of just getting used to each other. And sometimes that does take a couple of races just get fully there. Of course, this season, the Cup has seen the introduction of a licence limit. So it's now a B licence you've got to have to get into the races. And that's just to make sure everybody is up to speed with oval racing. Because we used to have it where it was uh, effectively, you know, just a bit of a free-for-all. But now there is the licences involved just to make sure everybody's had some experience. Uh, so that's going to make things a little bit different. And a few drivers have had to do a little bit of work to get their licences up, especially for the, uh, the dirt round that's coming up. I think a few people are going to be busy practising on the old dirt ovals just to get just to get their license up ready for the uh, Cup Series. I know that there's three or four drivers um, that, are, that are working very hard <laughs> to get it up to uh, a B license for the dirt. Yeah, it's, it's something that you don't run on too much um, if you're not a dirt specialist. And that, that could be a little bit of harvesting going on there. Um, and of course, the road races, of course, it's all the different licenses. So uh, it's a B4 oval uh, track and of course dirt so you need to get those licenses up in the cup series and uh these drivers have been working hard in the off season to get that so wade she is going to be leading us away here on the outside yeah, it will be jay russ bit of a bit of a change up at the front here with sheedy so he's obviously um decided his best option is to lead from the front and hopefully get another caution and it'll, it'll sit in in there but if it does run green that means he's gonna have to stop on his own as well so uh new player at the front these guys will be wary of it too like i heard mark talk about trust they got to be able to trust Sheedy, so they're going to see what he's going to do in the next couple of laps. Yeah, it's it's always that little bit of hesitation when you've got somebody up front that you're not 100% sure on, but a lot of experience in the uh, in other series, another, in the actual... Uh, uh, what am I talking about? The, the main... The, the normal races on high racing. But she leads away, gets a good start there. And the middle ball behind again. Russell gets a nice push from his teammate Hobson behind him. It is Russell and Hobson up on that high line at the moment. This could be an opportunity for Mitch Motorsport to link together because Jason Martin's not too far off. 
Josh Micklemore's down on that low line at the moment. And if he starts to look up, they could make this work very well. Look at the two synergy cards going down. Ooh. Andrew Dyson mm. just absolutely pushes his way down. Definitely contact there. He actually touched the rear of Boston's car. So very lucky Dyson didn't end up in facing the wrong way. Yeah, Dyson was just oh, having the top, that position. Top. Oh, head shot looking almost to take three wide. Jason Martin doesn't want to... Oh, there oh, they go. we got contact. That's we've Barry Neal. That's a Paul Jackson. Two, three, Paul, Paul Jackson, Jackson. Into, the, into the inside wall there. So uh, you could see that the uh, the pack was... There was something going on there. They, they were trying to make three wide. I'm not sure. But uh, you can see Paul there. The purple wheels for Mark. They're uh, gathered it all up. He's going to have to go at pit lane speed now to get back out on track. I'm going to jump back to a replay. <clears throat> So yeah, it looks like Jackson just gets out of the uh, draft and just swings down and then all of a sudden goes to the front of Pearson. Uh, Pearson just sort of sitting there, nowhere to go in that respect. Jackson just sort of getting out of the draft and getting hung up and then into Pearson and around the road. No caution flag, no. Um, but a lot of damage in front of Jackson. He went into the uh, pit wall pretty heavy. Yeah, so we're still on replay here at this point in time. So you're going to see a little bit of a funny thing up here behind Martin so Martin's going to go high here Hedishaw is going to get up there as well and um, almost make it three wide then they all sort of had a bit of a flutter and it's there almost, you go as I say it's almost like they just sort of all got out of position and just the car's aero just all of a sudden everything went weird the car's got light um, and then around he goes and whoever that was getting into pit lane just had a very narrow miss uh, that was um, Gary Wellman actually uh, the the Simboys driver getting very lucky uh, to avoid that incident. Uh, Wellman, we saw avoid avoiding two incidents now. Wellman using up tell two of what, his nine lives. I'll tell you what, the damage on that two three one isn't too bad for the comp that he made. Like that front end doesn't look too bad. He's he's got it going again. Um, I, he's still one lap down at least now. Uh, so yeah, he might be able to just get in the back here and uh, wait for a caution, get it repaired, and he might be all right. He might get away with that. Yeah, it was pretty much front on contact, so he might be okay with that one. It didn't look like it was too heavy, and we know, of course, it is a Toyota, so it will survive anything. Um, so, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, there it's all. Um, he jumps in line, and actually, uh, whoever that was behind him just had a big moment. I think it might have been... Um, uh, Trey? Tra uh, no, it was... we got one down there, slow on the apron. It looks like... I don't know who it is, sorry. I couldn't see who that was. He slotted down in front of somebody, and uh, it was Matty Ray, I think. Um, just slotted down in front of Matty Ray, and uh, Matty Ray had to sort of just take a couple, little bit of avoiding action there. But, um, yeah, it's getting a bit tight now. Up at the front, the racing is very tight. Still, they are nose to tail at the moment. Jane Russell in the lead ahead of the man with, well, two of the, the greatest facial hair drivers in Anne's car, Hobson and Dyson. Uh, there with the magnificent beards. Uh, Wade Cheedy in behind him with Josh Mickleball, Neil Pearson, Hedgesheet, Martin Foster, and JCW running out of the top 10. All right, we're working, uh, what are we, lap 88, about to start lap 89. I'm going to give you guys some time to think about it. Lap 100, we'll make the cutoff, and uh, we'll, we'll get back to you and see if your picks from the start of the race are still the same now. Obviously, Probably not so much Jaeger, but... <laughs> I'd like but, to change uh, my pick, please. <laughs> yeah, so let's have a think about it. Lap 100, we'll call it. We'll see who we're locking at lap at half time, basically. Yeah, it's that, that thing of uh, coming to look through. But uh, speaking of, Jaeger is still in the race. He's down there in 25th position at the moment on the lead lap. So it's not all over for him at the moment. He's there with uh, Spencer. So he's hooked up with his teammate and he's still got some decent speed as long as he's sitting in behind another car. So... The race is definitely not over, and, uh, you know, it could still happen. So you can never say never. No, that's it. Who, who did you go with, Mark? I think you said Ruben, didn't you? Or Brad? Uh, Brad, Brad, or, Brad or Ruben. Yep, yep. Actually, where is Brad? Oh, how's, how's his Brad's race? 13th. 13th. 13th at the moment. Oh, I'll, I'll at the moment, Brad. Mate, I, I can't not go back, back Brad because, you know, it's been a teammate. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I agree, mate. And uh, and I'll, I'll I'll back Brad as well because he's uh he's backed me. He's put me in the lead of one of these races and got me a win one of these races. Not a not a five hundred, but definitely a restricted plate. He uh, he worked with me and pushed me to one of the, my wins. So um, yeah, I've always got respect for Brad as well. He's um 
he's a person that just works so hard behind the scenes. Like I know, um, last week he was spending nearly seven hours a day on the on the sim working out his setup. Yeah, and you, mate, and it shows too. And uh, that paid off for him too. You see the lockout in the front row of Ruben and, and Bradley. So uh, respect and props to uh, Brad and that team for uh, getting that car sorted. And, and it was a quick one. Yeah. Look, I, I, I'll be honest. Brad was worried that he wouldn't even make the race with yeah. um, ha- having <laughs> <laughs> with having a lot of a lot of time off last year for some uh, personal personal issues. Um, but I mean to say, he, he's both both those boys have done a great job um, with each other, working hard with that setup. So, and as you say, it's, it looks like it's been a really decent setup because it's got the pace in the qualifying and it's got a good race pace as well. And that's what you want in these cars. Of course, one of the big teams, Synergy, they have got a good setup going up at the front, and that's not surprising. You say they work together well with Mitch Motorsports, so I imagine they're running very similar uh, setups or done some working with each other. Wade Sheedy doing a good job sitting up there in P4 at the moment. He's slotted himself in nicely, and this is not a bad position to be in. He probably didn't want to be leading the race with that fuel deficit of 10 laps or so, um, but sitting in behind the other cars will just help that fuel mileage a little bit for him, get him a little bit longer in this race, so he gets a bit more of a chance later on if there's a caution in the next next 20 or so laps so i'm gonna i'm gonna put a question to you dave yeah mate so we're almost mid-race where do you want to be sitting uh at this point in time i still want to be at the front everything's happened midfield backwards so even in the top 15 these guys all been pretty safe in that top 15 so i'll just go on back through that list there now at into the top 20 you see Scurley has finally for the first time today I think he's cracked the top 20 at the moment so he's sitting in behind uh Paul Jackson at the moment who's a lap down but uh yeah so so Scurley's actually worked his way through and had to work hard to get there I believe too and you can see Luke Traher one of his uh satellite teammates would be uh a good idea to uh join up with him but he's had that damage as well but seems to be holding his pace and uh you can see Ben Vickers in there that beautifully presented Mustang uh, the number 77 there as well. You can see the old school sort of... I think that's a Jim Richards Mustang, actually. You might be able to correct me, Carl, but it looks very Jim Richards-esque. Yeah, that beautiful uh, sponsorship. We can't say, of course, but the black and gold livery of a certain company that sell certain items that adults use uh, for smoking things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, absolutely beautiful livery, the old JP. Uh, uh I, I don't think it really matters what 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 car that 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 livery's on. I remember uh, uh, certain speedway people coming out and ha- running a three car team with that paint paint scheme. Yeah, it's it's nice and clean and flush, eh? Yep. All right, lap ninety five, boys. We're, we're time's ticking down. You got about ten minutes. Well, not even that actually. <laughs> <You've> got about <laughs> four minutes to work out who you, who's your pick. You've got to lock them in. Lock them in by lap 100. Have a think about it over the next couple of laps, and uh, we'll see where we end up. Oh, that's why I'll answer the, the top 20 there, just to see who's running away. You can see Riley Curtis on your screen there. Uh, I think he's got his teammate behind him. He does, Schroeder. Um, oh, I'm, I'm going to go one step further. The the, the people that have, all, all our viewers, uh, send me a message on Facebook, and I'll, I'll reveal who your pick is at yeah, lap definitely. 100. Give us, give us your picks. Give us your picks. We'll get a, get get everyone involved because it's yes. a bit of a lottery. <laughs> who who do we want to put the curse on? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, oh, all well, three of them, or well, well, whatever's left. <laughs> See, normally I'd go for you, Dave, just just because I, I love the curse on you. But uh, you know, it's, it's, it could be me being a thing, Dave. I was going to say. I was going to say. Is it too late to uh, join the race? <laughs> <laughs> well, gather some of them uh, busted cars at the back that the guys have hopped out of will jump in them and take them for a run. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Let's take the old 1-3 runner Steve Hoppers for a run. I know that thing's in the truck. <laughs> yeah, you so, need to get it cranked, though. That's the trouble. I'm just... Uh, I've got some trivia here. I'm just trying to see if I, if I brought it up. 
Exactly. See, this is my favourite kind of thing. Trivia. Trivia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're in a bit of a holding pattern at the moment. Everyone's happy to write and, and just sit for now. Because um, we're not even halfway yet, just yet. So uh, that's why everyone's happy and content to sit there where they are. And uh, just tick the laps off for now and then I'll worry about racing. Later. I can see down the back there, they're too wide though, but uh, not much significant going on there. It's more the guys just trying to just keep themselves in some sort of position as they get very close down the back straight down that side draft. Which actually pulls that car down the back slower off the back of the two cars in front. So while these guys are doing side by side, they'll only be going slower. So they need to get themselves in line and get them sort of sorted out. All right, here's one for you. Okay, who has done <laughs> who has done the most laps around here? Uh, that's got to be uh, Richard Petty. Yeah. Nope. nope. Oh. Do you mean real life? Yes, real life. In in real life. Uh, Carl? <laughs> mate, you got I, yeah, stuff, I'm, mate. He's got nothing at all. Wait, yeah, no, first time well, in no, history, no, mate. No, 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 no Googling. <laughs> no, that's it. Um, I, I'm wondering if it's actually somebody sort of that's currently in the modern era because they would be... You know, for some of them have been driving for quite a while, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm gonna go Levante. You're absolutely one hundred percent right. Terry oh, Levante really? Terry Levante has done five thousand <laughs> nine hundred and fifty seven laps, which oh. is equivalent to equivalent to fourteen thousand eight hundred and twenty uh ninety two miles or 23,900 kilometers. I would, I have, am... it would have been someone like Derek Cope. Yeah, yeah I was, I was <laughs> like absolutely... Still driving. <laughs> I was straining my brain there, trying to think. So I was expecting it would be somebody that's currently driving. But yeah, you know, I was thinking like... Well, it, it, I was thinking, sort of going like, uh, it wouldn't be Aaron Hart. And, and I was just like, Levante. And, oh, I actually I feel very proud of that one. <laughs> All right. Here's another one, and we'll open this up to our spectators. And no Googling or anything else out there. Who has had the most starts in the Daytona 500? Yeah, right. I'm about to get cross flags here too, guys. I know that Mark will know what cross flag means. Yes. <laughs> That's a dirt dirt racing term. Cross flags, halfway home. Yep. I am going to put my money on Matty Ray. What? Yeah, I thought you were answering uh, Mark Stripper. Uh, uh, yeah. like, yeah, yeah. yeah. uh, a lot of races here. Um, no, uh, for, for, for... Okay, so so Carl's going with Raddy May. I'm, I'm, mate, I'm torn, but I'm liking Daiso at this point in time. Uh, where's uh, Brad? It was, it was between Daiso and, and Edward. I think Edward's aggressive enough to make the moves that you need to make the moves to win here. Uh, but I'm just liking the position that uh, Daiso's got himself into at this point in time. No, I, I'm going to stick with uh, Mr. Allison. He, he's he's sitting in, his boy. He, he's still in third. He's sitting in 13th. So lucky 13th for, for Brad mid, mid race. No. All right, there you go. We never got my pick at the start of the race, but my pick for the, for the win of the race is actually Hobson. Just because it doesn't matter what he jumps in, he's fast. Mm. Oh, there you this go. You had it here first. <laughs> All right. Darren, Darren McKenzie's just tuned in, and he said Aiden Schultz to win. Oh, Aiden was up there. He he worked his way up there. He got flushed out uh, after um, going through wide, but level. he was up there. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, he got himself in the position there to get to the front. Like it's, I mean, sometimes you just got to do that. you got to test out what you got. You go to the front. So, yeah. right, let's see if we can get to the front first. And, um You'll see some of these drivers, like, they might just be content now to ride single file, but it wouldn't surprise me if someone jumps out and just try something, you know? You've got to try something and, and learn. Uh, Steve Hoppert is gone Ed Foster. Oh, E53. Um, and Glenn McLeod is gone Daiso with, with, with the last lap pass for the win. Yeah, good choice, Glenn. Glenn, oh. yeah, I'll tell you what, if, if that happens, I'm coming to you. For the next week's lotto numbers for 120 million dollars. 
<laughs> yeah. Get your injuries in as he continues, guys, are putting a few more cars up down. That's actually Denny G, Scotty Griffiths is in there. Um, Peter Wilkinson's in there. I didn't catch the other one. It's Lockie Urquio, actually. Uh, yeah. So those guys have got a little four pack down there. Um, just trying to uh, keep themselves going at this point in time. So, so keep that going. Have you have you thought about who's who had the most wins, Carl? Uh, most, uh, most wins or most starts? Sorry, most most starts. I'm going with Yarbrough. Nope. Okay, that's me out. <laughs> most starts at Daytona. Yep. Oh, it's got to be uh, like Bobby Allison or something like that. Derek Coe. Nope. Nope. <sighs> Not Patty, is it? Nope. I can tell you, it's in the thirty. In the 30s, David Marcus. We'll go oh, through Dave Marcus. Marcus. Wow. Yep. With 33 starts. Is that in cup or? In cup. Wow. Wow. Because I know he was a big like a uh, local short track racer, wasn't he? Yep. As well. Did you see the screen there? There's a couple of cars at the back there getting making me a little bit nervous. There, you had Lockie three wire with uh, Wilco on his outside there, I think, and they were very tight, but they managed to sort themselves out. And of course, they got some damage on them as well, which doesn't help. Makes the car a bit unpredictable, especially when you get into some of the drafts and things like that. That can really start to make things act a little bit different than you were expecting it earlier on in the race. Yeah, definitely, and, and one of the major things it's not going to be fast. Uh, if you've got any yeah. sort of damage on these cars at these uh, speedway tracks, Super C speedways, uh, as we were saying earlier in the in the broadcast, setup wise, you want to make that thing as slipstream as possible. As soon as you damage them parts on the car, it crinkles up, um, you create drag, and it will just slow you down. So uh, you can you can ride in the packs, but on your own, you're even slower again. So, so right about now, I reckon uh, mid race or just over now mid race. Uh, what what are you feeling uh, at, at a distance this, this long, Dave? Like, I know my hands tend to start to cramp up a little bit if I've had a had a nail biter of a race. Um, your backside wants to go to sleep on you. Yeah, for me, it's my right foot. Uh, everything else is I usually get away with, but just the right foot, I'll start to get um, like a numb numb right foot on the accelerator just constantly holding it flat almost um it's even worse when you're at the front when you have no option but to hold it flat and it, it can get v real numb for me and the worst part is if you're on a long green flag stop you come to, to um take your green start green flag stop you've got no feeling in your foot so you put your foot on the brake pedal and you don't actually know <laughs> how hard you're pushing because you can't feel it yeah um, so i've had that in the past and it's it's not a nice feeling but yeah they you do get worn out through these races you need to have a bit of water sitting beside you or something throughout it but uh yeah for me it's it's mostly the right foot of course uh, the worst part is if you have too much water before the race it can be very uncomfortable um that's when you, you need the yeah, extra well. bottle there just in case um just want to mention wayne sheedy he's going to be looking at a little bit of trouble now he's on 36 well 37 flat of this run so he's going to be starting to get into the vapor territory in that fuel tank that car is going to be getting lighter and lighter and he is going to be hoping to see a caution flag in the next lap or two, I'd say. Yeah, absolutely. That's a that's very good um, call and good pickup there. So we'll uh, keep an eye on him because, uh, yeah, any ticket of the clock, he, he may just jump out. Like He'll be saving what he can behind those other guys, but uh, 10 laps is a big difference. Yeah. yeah a... When you don't get a, a caution, you, you, you've got to try and, and feather that that uh, gas pedal through the, through the corns, corners. Uh, through the corn. It's <laughs> <laughs> been a long day. <laughs> um, yeah, just li lift that little bit earlier. Let it, let the car roll through the corner. But you've also can't do that because you've got that car exactly right behind right. you. Exactly right. Dangerous if you sort of start to try to roll through. You just got to just try and be gentle on the throttle. Uh, you can run seventy five percent behind the draft and save fuel that way. Because I mean. He's got to save about 10 laps for the fuel, but Hobson at the front, oh, sorry, Jaden Russell at the front, he'll be using more fuel than the rest of the guys, and I'm going to say it'd be about a three-lap difference being at the front compared to in the pack. So it won't be as big as deficit, but uh, still that's a lot of saving he'd have to do to try and make that up. So any of the ticket clock, he's going to um, come down and take a pit stop. So I, I, I know when, when, when I'm trying to save fuel, 
I don't tend to turn the car off. I know a lot of guys, and you see it in real life, a lot of guys can't turn the car off. Um, I tend to just put my foot on the clutch um, and save save fuel that way. I, I'm just wondering how many guys in, in the field do those different ways of trying to save fuel you know, under caution. We've seen it in the past with especially people like uh, Micklemore who will absolutely put the old ignition off and roll yeah, it around I'm a, a little I'm bit. I'm an ignition guy. I'll, I'll, I'll switch you off under caution just to try and save that little bit of fuel. Like it, it, it made me nothing, but it made me a lot towards the end of the race. Of course, well, the beauty of sim racing is there's less chance of it not starting. So that's that's one of the things in uh, full metal yeah, racing is the old switching the car off and on is an absolute risk because so many races have been lost because that thing does not fire up again. Yeah, definitely. The 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 real real my my style of real racing. Um, Dave knows I'm yeah. from Speedway yeah, background. You, chance. <laughs> <laughs> you turn that sucker off, you, she's that's stopping. <laughs> And you ain't getting it back in the gear. <laughs> no, no, you got one shot. <laughs> Don't ruin it. Yeah, it's it's very difficult though at these speeds to really save anything. As um, oh, just getting a little bit loose there for Pearson. He just yeah, absolutely a little, had a big moment. Bubble there, yeah, a little bubble. Um, so that's broken the bubble a little bit behind Micklemore. He's going to be able to catch back up again, but that was just a little bit of a moment. So these cars are starting to get a little bit twitchy now. 30 laps into the stint for most of them, 41 for Wade Sheedy. So he is very much going to be uh, needing to duck into pit lane in the next lap or two, I'd say, because uh, he is going to be really tight on field. Yeah, well, good that's the biggest indication. And to be honest, once he ducks in it, it's an only a matter of time for the other guys to start shaping up, ready to take some stops as well, because they won't be too far behind him, I don't believe. No, especially Jack Russell has been leading this race. He's probably going to be coming in in the next, probably about the next five to seven laps, I'd say. I reckon he'll be looking at coming in around about then. Um, so not long until we possibly see our first round of green flag stops here for the Ansgar Cup Daytona 500, brought to you on Performance E-Streaming. Uh, of course, the new home for the Ansgar Cup. Yeah, and and all that changes in a heartbeat when that if that yellow flag comes out. So uh, that's what uh, Shitty's going to be hoping for. Fingers crossed, he'll have everything crossed at the moment. Try and um, hope there's a caution somewhere in the field. Hopefully not himself, uh, and then he'll get away with it and he'll be able to keep that track position. Um, but if the if the caution doesn't fly, it means he's going to drop right to the back and he'll, have, he'll be out there for multiple laps on his own, and that'll that'll kill his race. Yeah, that's where it gets really painful. Uh, when you come out on your own and there's nobody around you, it's, ooh, Russell just gets a little bit of a snap of oversteer on the exit of the corner again. And these cars are just starting, they look like they get a little bit unsettled as they get lighter and those tyres start to wear a little bit. They really look like they don't enjoy it. Yeah, that's almost what's happened to Pearson before as well. I think it just got a little bit light, but yeah, as you said, the fuel load comes off. Just lifts that uh, rear of the car lighter and uh, the lighter it is, the less grip you're going to have as well. So. Nickelmore just poking his nose out there for a second, but uh, I think it's just because he's bored. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to see something different for a change. Yeah, that's that's it. It. There's not much else about it because he didn't do anything with it. So he had, had a little look and went back in. <laughs> of course, so, we're, we're talking a bit about the physical aspect, but the mental focus as well in this sort of style of racing is very tricky as well. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, when you get to this stage of the race, when you've been running in a pack this long, when you're nose to tail like this, it gets so mentally fatigued. Yeah, and that's right. And you're only halfway through, and they haven't had a full green run yet, so this is they'd be working the hardest now. Like, you, you think, oh, yeah, just hold the flat and steer it, but yes and no, it can be easy from the back. If you're at the back, and there's not so much consequence, but at the front, when you're in this front pack here, yeah, you, you've got to be on the go, because if something happens, you've got to be ready for it, and the guys at the front are more and more aggressive than just cruising at the back, you know, so well, you can see a couple of these guys are having a bowl. Actually, Hobson's actually having a push now on the back of Jaden, so actually to give him a little nudge, and that ooh, second pack out the back has actually caught up now with uh, probably Paul Jackson or Baron Neal was leading that pack, and they're actually one big pack now. Yeah, Hobbo just catching the line there as well, so he managed to save that one. Just passing Luke Georgeson there, uh, who's just dropped down a lap, um, but not the end of the race if he didn't hook himself up to the back of this pack to we'll try and get a bit of that side draft, try and Ooh. hook onto the back of this train and he might be able to get the lucky dog position. Um, 
But got to say, it must be nail biting for Sheedy at the moment because he is really, really going to be on the air running on vapors right now. Um, you know, breathing, breathing into the old uh, fuel tank, trying to get any extra bit of vapor he can into that tank because it must be getting light. You can see the little gap that they've just opened up over Shitty too. So that was from a push from the 88 of Hobbo. Um, just got right on the back of Jaden, give him a good push. He had um, the 41 of Dicer right behind him too. He, and he actually went up the track. So he's got to be careful. If he goes up the track too far and Dicer is just in the wrong position, he'll actually catch that inside rear. And if he touched that inside rear, he's definitely gone. Like you can push on the outside of the rear, but if you catch the inside, that'll turn that car 180 degrees, if not 1080. I'm just looking uh, at the live timing. Um, Mr. Jackson hasn't done too bad after that incident. He, he, he should we have a, a, a caution, he'll be the first lucky dog. So he's done, yeah, he's done yeah. well to get back up to where he has. Yeah, absolutely. I think it might have been him that dragged that pack back up too. So um, even that little bit of damage, he got away with it pretty uh, pretty scot-free, really. Could have been a much bigger incident. As she Sheedy pulls off, here he comes. Um, just interesting. I'm just looking through the uh, get it cars. Up? Oh, he oh. just gets a little squirm, but he gets it pulled up. <laughs> he, that was uh, very close. So I'd, it, it would have been millimeters in that. Yeah, absolutely. He would have pucked it up for a little bit there, but uh, so, taking right. Is he going to take lefts? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. For me, yeah, you more as well. Taking a full tank, you take all tires. Yeah. Oh, we got one down on the apron. Just got loose there. I think that might be Paul Jackson actually. Coming off turn two. Uh, right back there. Shoot. It was Raddy Mayman. Raddy Mayman. Uh, Raddy May. Uh, I'm just having a look on the. Going back to see what happened. And it was the same. Oh, he sort of got loose, got on the apron, then. Oh, it just snaps. Like it's almost like a. You get on the outside that train track and she just snaps sideways on him. So he's done absolutely brilliant to keep that car straight and forward at the point and not get that inside wall. So big save from Raddy May there. It's interesting. I'm just uh, having a look through the cars and Jane Russell running fourth gear at the moment, running really high revs. Uh, and that's going to be chewing up the fuel a lot more than the cars behind him because um, that's going to start affecting him a little bit. He's running around about nine, 9,200 revs and... Uh, Got the cars in fifth gear running about 8,200, you know, so that's yeah, a that's, big difference. That's very interesting as well because I find, like, sometimes that can just be a lapse of concentration, mate. Sometimes you're just used to that four gear, so you just ride it out there. You don't know, you actually you forget there's a, a fifth gear in there, so you don't pull it. I've had that, yeah, that as well. That's what I was going to say, Dave. Oh, I often come out and I'm in fourth gear yeah. and I think, yeah, right, I'm good to go. Oh, hang on. That's I've got exactly another right. gear to go here. Yeah, so I wonder if, if that's just their setup or he's actually... Not, he's had he's had a, one of my moments and hasn't pulled the fifth gear. But uh, I know one of the big things in this open setup that I noticed you can actually change the the ratio. So um, they may have a, a smaller ratio. So it, uh, we won't actually use that fifth gear; it just uses all four gears. But for me, if he's getting pushed, I'd be yeah, I'd be snapping into the fifth there and uh, hitting the overdrive. Yeah, it's as I said, it's a fair amount of difference in the revs as well. So he's going to be using a fair bit more fuel, especially being in the front there as well. So you can see Sheedy actually just on the screen. I'm um, sorry to cut over here. You can see uh, he's on his own now. Uh, he's had his pissed up now. You can see him just falling back. So he's not going to be able to jump in until all those cars go past. Otherwise, he'll call this himself a wreck. But uh, he's going to want to try and jump on the back of it. But yeah, you can already see the ga um, the ground he's lost. And he's he just goes. sliding oh, in. Got it in. Yep. So nicely done from Shady. That's actually worked out very well for him. That could be that could be a very useful one if we get some green flag stops and the cars break up a little bit. Because uh, he managed 47 laps on that tank. Of course, a couple of those were under caution, but uh, 47 laps is a decent run on there. Um, for somebody like Jane Russell, I imagine he's not going to be able to go too much longer. He's probably going to be coming in yeah. now. So yeah. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> so that was orchestrated with those two guys in the synergy team. Obviously, uh, the other guys are able to stay out. These guys just want to come in on their own, get a nice clean stop, lose as less time as they can. We've just got to make it hit the marks here and make sure they, uh, as they both do. So uh, both of the marks have nicely and a nice clean drive out of the pit lane here to lose, lose as many, less time as you can because it's, uh, you know, you come in with the pack, it can be a bit helter skelter. And I reckon the pack probably won't be too far from jumping in uh, on the back straight there. I think they'll be coming in too. Yeah, I think we'll see a glut of cars coming in soon. 
Um, of course, the longer you can run with this pack, it's going to be helpful because it'll just give you a little bit of space. And this is going to break them up a little bit if we remain green right now. So obviously they're going to try and go as long as possible now. So they're going to go an extra lap in this pack. And it's going to be interesting to see where those synergy cards come out in comparison to Sheedy, I'd say. Uh, because we'll see how much time they're going to lose um, just being out there on that, just with the two cars. Um, uh, for me, they shouldn't lose as much as Sheedy at this point in time. I, I think they'll be fine. They just need to get connected up and run as hard as they can, but I don't reckon this pack will catch them before they have to go to in the pit lane. I was just going to say, I think if one in one more car in this pack blinks, the whole lot will. Yeah. Pretty close. So uh, Hobson and Russell are out there. They're just getting across the uh, driver's right, section now. DPR. Yeah. DPR pit. The rest of them come in. So they get it, all get it pulled up in here. Nicely. Dice had a little bit of squirrely there, but nicely done by most of that pack there. You can see Wally as well, one of the other DPR cars also coming in. And Luke Traher. Get it pulled up on the marks. Yep. Nicely That's done. A nice little pack they've got coming in there. So Micklemore now leads the race with Hedishy behind him, Martin in third, Foster fourth, Carol Walden fifth, J Aiden Schultz in sixth, seventh for Allison, Jordan, Kevin Jordan in eighth position, nice run from him, Barry Neal in ninth and tenth for Mr. Mickey Scarlock. Uh, so I reckon we're going to see these cars coming in now. The main pack do you start with the Mitch cars. And the Natari cars are sticking it out there. So Natari have been doing a bit of fuel saving there. They're going to keep it out for a little bit longer. Try and run a bit longer, see if they can get that fuel mileage to their advantage. Running this nice little pack to keep some speed up and see if they can make a bit of a position on the track later in the race. They are catching up to um, to a couple of cars, so it's going to be it's going to be traffic now, and that's going to be one of the scary things as you get up to these cars just pulling out on the track, coming out of pit lane, is you can get a lot of traffic sort of playing into it. So I think we're going to see Natari pitting in this lap. And just to keep you updated, just to keep the other guys updated, uh, out have stopped. You've got the DPR and the Synergy guys have formed a full four car train right now. So those guys are in good uh, good steed right now. They, they didn't lose too much time on that stop. So they're running not too far. They're entering turn one now as the pack's not too far behind, but they've made a good stop. They've got the cars sorted and back out there. So it'd be interesting to see uh, where it all shuffles out here as they start to catch the guys in the pit lane right now on the, way, on the back straight there. Yeah, that front pack stuck it out, so they're sticking it out there just a little bit longer, and that's going to give them a little bit more option later in the race, of course. Uh, the longer you stay out there means the little bit more time you've got, so if a caution does fly, you're going to be pretty much... Uh, you're going to be in a better seat if it comes out in the right time for you. I'm, I'm, so sorry, Carl. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I, was, I think you'll find Natari will be in this lap. Yeah, and the rest yeah, of them do as well. Oh, no, that's going to be dangerous. Do they all get in? Oh, jeez, i tell you what. Oh, Jackson. in the grass, he just got it done, though. He just gets it done, but it's going to be steep. The other... Uh, the, the, the other the other dangerous thing is, here is is when everyone comes in like that, if if someone that uh, stays to that left of the, of the pit lane and you, you want to get into your pit box, you could end up having an accident on pit road. Yeah, absolutely. You can get wiped out all completely just trying to get to your pit box. But I'm just keeping it on as a front pack, as you can see on your TV, the Natari guys all leaving that pit lane now. Josh Micklemore's just gone too wide with those guys, so I don't see the point in that just yet. Um, I'd be yeah, focusing on getting past the guys on the way out of pit road here and then worry about racing after you make all that time up. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see because that pack is so pretty even in speed. So it's going to be nice and jumbled here. We'll see if there's any trouble down this back straight. They're going to be forming up, coming out with each other. So you can see now that lead pack just catching up to the cars, just passing uh, Paul Jackson. I think it was there. While well, well, Batari have managed to get out just ahead at the moment. They're a little bit broken up. JCW is a little bit far off. They need to try and link up a little bit because that big main pack is on the high side at the moment, flying past JCW. Um, and they've got a good train going. Uh, Head of Shooting Foss are pushing away, trying their best to get this to work. But Dyson has got a good run. He's going to stop down in front of them and take that position and start using the draft from the lead cars in the pack, which is Foster. 
So not a bad little idea here. Slot yourself in behind these guys, make them use the fuel. They've managed to go a lap or two longer than you, but if you can make them sit out in front and then they can use more fuel than you and you can stay out there maybe a little bit longer. Yeah, so at this point in time, this is the racers pack here for now. Um, and I've always had a theory of if you stay out in a pack, you'll always go quicker. You'll always come out in front of the guys that have already stopped because you, you're not going through the process of getting back up to speed, getting back in there. You're, while they're doing all that, you're maintaining your top speed. And uh, that's exactly what's happened with the 53 and uh, the 035 here. So we've got that second pack. We've got a second pack coming up now. Um, yeah. Currently being coming? led by Michael Scurlock. Oh, yellow, yes, yellow, yeah. yellow. yellow. Matt, Matt Knight. Knight. So, jump back to a replay here. So, I'm not sure what we're looking for here, but there's something's obviously gone away here. We've got Cars Australia in there, Luke Trahair's in there too, I think. So, Matt Knight is the 25 car, which is second in line in that pack behind the 23. Just got into the 23 of Jaeger and around Jaeger goes. So we'll see here, just gets pulled up to the back of Jaeger, makes a bit of contact, and Jaeger just gets... Oh, we've seen that story. Oh. Already. We've seen that book so, already. Again, as we say, pushing on the front just doesn't work. These cars don't want to be pushed on the straights. They need, you need to really bump draft in the corners when they're actually being compressed because it seems when you bump draft on the actual straight line, the back end just lifts, and then all of a sudden around she goes. Yeah, you're going to get a good view of it here on the front end. So you see him, it's just out to the right of him now. So I wonder if as he comes back down the line already, he just, just nudges Jaeger on the transition. You can see him coming down. Yeah, that's what it is. He got on that, yeah, yeah, he got on that outside rear. Yeah, he's just touched him as he come back in the line yeah. to get in behind him. Yeah, but he's just uh, misjudged it. It's all it takes. Uh, and I tell you what, I, I know what that's like. It's a, it's a, it's all of it. it's like, man, where'd that come from? Yeah, and absolutely. That, you, you you're in for the ride. That's about it. Yeah, because you get that front of the point of the car. If it just gets outside, there's a there's a window. You have got to sit in to be able to push. If you're outside that window and you and you rub across that bumper, that's that's the result. Right there, so you'll see he'll just get out to his right here, out to uh, Raymond's right, and then he'll slice back across and just clip in that in that right rear of, of the twenty three. They do, they do say this is a it, these are races of millimeters, and you can see just there. Yeah, there it is, this, all it is. Yeah. So he's just outside that window of of safeness, I guess you could call it, yeah. and uh, that's all it took. But you know what this does. Compresses the field. Everybody's back oh, in. Oh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> 70 laps of uh, hard charging. Yeah, you'll start to see some guys start to make moves now, get a bit more aggressive now. That uh, Look, we're in the back half of the, the race now. Well, not quite, but almost. I mean, you don't go racing until 20, 20, 20 to go, but I uh, guarantee you this field, if you're sitting at the back there, you want to try and get to that front and, and have a run, see what you got. Yeah. Look, we, we've, we've uh, broached it already this afternoon. There is that many great kart drivers in this field. Uh, I mean to say, you could make a make a, a lunge here now and get it to get to the front. But that don't mean you're going to be at the front in in ten laps. Yeah, exactly right. It, it, it changes in the blink of eye here. You can be flushed out through the middle, out the back, out the side. Um, one minute you're looking at the front, looking at the the, the leader. The second minute you're looking at second place or second last place, I should say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's so easy to happen, and it's you've got to be, you know, quarter of a millimetre perfect to get it working, and sometimes those mistakes happen. And also, no surprises there uh, after just completing green flag stops. No one really came in in that front half of the field. If you're in the back half of the field, you're definitely coming in. You're going to top that tank up and get where you can because you're not going to lose as much as the leaders will lose. So if you're in that back part of the field, definitely come in for a stop there. Yeah, so yes. it's all Curtis, Spencer, Schroeder, Koch, and uh, those are the main ones that came in in the lead lap at least. So drivers on the lead lap coming in, that is your group there. So they've got so a keep them bit in mind. Fuel. Yeah, keep them in mind because what are we, lap 131, so there's less than 70 laps to go now, and that's half, so 35 lap stints. So those guys are in a good window there. So most looks 
to me, there should be one more stop basically to get home here. But uh, yeah, those guys will be just a little bit better off. If they, if they, if there is a caution, I, I would say that they're probably, well, for for us as a spectator, spectator, we hope we get a a, a seventy lap or a, a forty lap run, and then oh, with about twenty to go, a, a caution. And that's when you'll see the, the cream rise to the top. And... Oh, have a listen to you, Mark. You're geeing this up, mate. You're putting the mockers on you. He's, he wants some action, mate. <laughs> he wants to see some action out here, guys. <laughs> mate, mate, look, I, I, I only know right. what it's like. I know what it's like because of, <laughs> of winning uh, the, our, our Anzac Cup last year. I come from, I yep. think I was sitting yep. in 20th position with a yep. green, Ain't white no jacket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I come through and won it. So I, I mean, so. That. I was there that's, for it. <laughs> yeah, and there's some great racing to be had when when stuff like that happens. And uh, again, that comes down to what Carl was saying. Carl and I were saying last night. That's you've got to get that ticket, and that yeah. luck's got to be there for you. Absolutely. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, the Tari boys might be a little bit annoyed about that because they sort of just worked themselves into that lead of that pack, and we're sitting pretty right there. Now mm-hmm. they've got the big angry pack behind them again. It's two by two at the moment. We've got the Tari, we've got uh, DPR, and then we've got Synergy behind them. Uh, so it's a lot of team cars up there, and it's always interesting to see that the post car will be coming in shortly. It pulls into pit road. Foster's going to be leading away. Lap 132 of the race, 68 remaining here at Daytona for the Anticar Cup. 2022 season, Foster leads away nicely. Hedeshi getting a nice run with the Foster and uh, become the lead car in the pack. Will he get that chance? We'll soon find out. Look at Synergy dropping down. They've got a nice position there. And of course, Pearson, if he drops down, it's going to give the a chance to lock up with their two teammates as well, because JCW is sitting right behind him. Hedeshi getting a nice run. Pearson, yep. So we'll see Hedeshi drops down. No, Pearson Pearson drops. I like it. He's going to break them guys up. So he's going to try and break those guys up now. So that's a great move for Pearson, if, if for mine, because he's just broken Hedeshot and um, Edward up, but the 35 is still on the back bumper of the 035. So if those guys can push on, they'll drop down in front. But uh, I, I don't mind that move from the nine there. I like that. Really aggressive driving again from Pearson. We see we, we say Pearson's one of the aggressive drivers out there, and he absolutely took that position by force. Very nicely done. Uh, and it's not bad news if one of those uh, Natari cars gets in front of him as well, because that's just going to help the fuel mileage a bit. Yeah, absolutely. But right now, the guys are pretty content up top until the 35 gets clear, and I'd say they'll drop down too. But here's your man, Mark. Oh, there they go. And here's your man, Brad Allison, on his way. He's got a good little push from the 43. He's on his way to the front. I was just going to say, the bonus points uh, for Ant's car, I've, again, I'm not 100% sure, but do you get a bonus points for leading a lap? Yeah, for indeed. leading a lap, definitely. Yeah. So, you know, we, we've seen Ed out the front. We, we've seen JCW lead a lap. So we now see Daniel out front. Um, unfortunately for Norman, he's not going to get the chance to, to lead a lap. But, you, you know, the Tari guys there have, have all led a lap. So they've already got a nice little bonus for, for coming at the end of the, end of the race. Absolutely. Just keep an eye on us outside, Pack. I'm not, I don't like what's going on here it just looks unsettled so uh you can see wally got out of it he didn't like what he's seeing as well so he's out of that too so yeah they're just sort of breaking up on that top side now yeah brad needs to get back down into that low line yeah he's currently pulling traher along and traher as we said has got a bit of damage on that car so it's sort of a bit of a mismatch of cars mm. up there and this is going to hurt allison's run at the moment he needs to slide it in to that low line i i'm actually gonna just let me check something here. Is Paul Jackson back on the lead lap? Yeah, uh, he, no, no, he's, he's still a lap down. I was just just seeing where he is. Is he is in that second pack? I was going to say, if he can stay where he is and he was on the lead lap, he'd be the dark horse of, of the field, I reckon. Yeah, currently, uh, Jamie, uh, actually, I think Patton is. Currently in the lead in the Lucky Dog Stakes. Uh, it's between him and Luke Gervis at the moment. So Luke Johnson is on the lead lap. So he has, uh, he's 
Do you want to go? We're going to go three or one in a lap of the car here. So, oh, oh. I'm not locking. I don't lock that top line. Oh, still, I'm just keeping an eye on that. Still, like Luke's trying to have a big push. Oh, oh big, big moment as the car goes round. The Aiden Nike Schultz, goes is it? Patton. Nigel Patton. And oh, Nigel they're Patton. still reckon. They oh, reckon. Oh, 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 we've got a rollover, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. He's on his roof. He's still tumbling back there. He's still having a massive rollover. He's still going. Oh, oh, he oh, lands oh. on all fours. The cat Patton has landed that? on all fours. Oh, my goodness. That just exploded back there. It all looked like you called it right. It was Riley that something happened there with Riley got loose. And then, uh, yeah, just a big chain reaction. We'll jump back to a replay. So, yeah. So, Riley just got loose, gets loose in mid-corner. Um, just on the back end of Schroeder, it's almost like the front end of that car just had the aero lift off and that caused a massive check up behind him and then Patty was the unfortunate car to get caught up in that one. We have got a big one ladies and gentlemen here at Daytona and we've got a rollover as well. Oh, right. oh. All those guys, mate. That's just that's in, that's silliness coming around there. You'll see that wreck in front of you. You've got to try and stop. You can't just drive into a wreck like that. That's that's crazy. But uh Mate, that's a wild moment for Riley. How did he get away with that? So, yeah, so the thing is, now do these front guys come in and top off of fuel? Well, I've done. They've done over. Good uh, question. The shortest period is eleven, well, twelve laps for Natari. So I'd say they will all come in for some fuel. Yeah. Um, so we've got sixty-two laps remaining. So if you top up on fuel now. That means you've got a nice short stop to get to the yeah, end that, of the race. That that big air gap on this replay. Sorry, Carl, just cut over here. There's a big air gap here. These cars should have been trying to get this thing shut down and closed down a bit, but I don't know. They saw they saw positions maybe, and they just <laughs> they went in there and thought, let's get a part of it. Look at this. Oh, big oh. hit from Lockie. Straight into the side of Pat. Yeah, but to Scotty be fair. Griffiths in there. To be fair with Lockie, he, he, was, he probably was on the brakes and – he wasn't probably wasn't expecting um, that car to roll down so quick either. Yeah, you got to be expecting the the unexpected though. That's true, that's, true. That's the way that's I see it, mate. And that's the Cowboys I was talking about earlier, mate. The Cowboys at the back. <laughs> I reckon uh, get a good view from onboard uh, Paul Jackson. I reckon that's going to be the one to watch it. Look from. at Patton there, just having a good old barrel down the straight there. Someone Huge let incident. someone let through that car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mate, it, it went for a long time. I just kept going. Oh. Man, there's some rock. I, you know, Speedway, Dave. I've been in a car that that does that in real life, and I can tell you that ain't pretty. Yeah, it's blue skies there. So look at that. Look at that view. Chelsea's car on the, down the inside. Yeah, Chelsea's doing a, uh, a Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah, it's, as I said, um, if you watch on board Paul Jackson, he has just. He's lifted off, but he has just managed to avoid that by the narrowest of gaps. Uh, that was a very, very close moment. The camera does a little bit of freaking out there. So it's fun. Um, but yeah, he just absolutely misses that by millimeters. Hey, uh, sorry, Carl. So th th this is what Dave was talking about. You can see the smoke off the tires. So Paul, Paul would be already out of the gas. You can see him here and right. in, in the tack. Taco, the taco's coming down that quick, so you can see he's on the brakes. And yeah, if you've just, as you said, Dave, you've got to be aware, got to look, look, look in front of you. That's it. Um, you just become a part of the accident too quickly around here. So you, as soon as you see that smoke, you've got to be ready to hit the brink, hit, hit the anchors. And the problem is, sometimes people aren't. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is, that's what happens. <laughs> uh, in one of the practice races we were having a few weeks ago, I had one of those moments where I come flying around the corner and was just a massive wreck in front of me and slammed on the anchors and just managed to pull it up just in the nick of time to avoid the wreck. But it is one of those things. Of, it is such a close call sometimes. Yeah, um, that's it. I know. And you'd be surprised how quick they pull up. They do pull up pretty quick. If you've got no intentions of trying to make positions through a wreck, they will pull up pretty quickly. I, I know from experience, and that's how I end up with a straight car towards the end of these races still, which by heads-up driving. Most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> Unless it's the Cowboys, mate. you just got to watch out there, them Cowboys, mate. I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, Greg Spence and Matt Knight have stayed out. They've not pitted. So the rest of the field come in for fuel-only stops. It looks like Hobbo has actually taken tyres or has missed his pit lane. Um, so Hobson had a long stop, 14 seconds. So I reckon he had all four tyres going on because um, that wouldn't have been fuel. 
Uh, so I'm just going back to have a quick look at that one. So I reckon Hobo... Matt Knight stayed out too. Sorry, just kind of, yeah. Yeah, so Hobo took all four tyres as well. So he, I reckon he forgot to switch that off. Uh, so he took tyres by mistake, and that's going to drop him right down the pack, um, right from the front to the back. So that's going to affect Hobson for the rest of this race. But Matt Knight and Greg Spencer are going to be up the front. Matt Knight, we saw having that little moment earlier on um, with uh, Raymond Yeager, I think it was. Uh, and now he is up at the front of the pack leading this race, and he's going to be leading away for the 500. 60 laps remaining here tonight. So we are getting to the end of this race. There is going to be one more stop, uh, possibly one more stop, uh, for this race, I would say. Uh, it's going to be an absolute nail biter to the end. Yep, new leader here. So we'll see how uh, uh, Matty Knight here handles the pressure of being out front, being a number one. Uh, and then he's got uh, who's on his outside there? I just read it. Spencer. Greg That's Spencer. right, Greg Spencer out there as well. So the Natara cars. Uh, we've got a few new players up in town, basically. Good run yeah. there, boy, for Greg. Yeah, he got a great restart. He's working the lines yeah. here at the moment too. He's done know whether to go down or high or low or out or in. Good little shove there off the bumper of uh, header shot. So he's got Pearson behind him, pushing him now on the outside. You see Josh Mickamore back in the pack, just jump up into that top line as well. That high line's got a great run at the moment. Oh, Look at that that's going to be oh. trouble, mate. Trouble. Huge crash. He's that is a big one, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That has taken out a lot of our lead pack. Uh, Pearson into the back of Hatchet, I think. Yeah, I, I could see that it, it developing. They were just they were having such a big run, and then it was sort of in and out, like with the Jaguar incident, and um, the guys didn't know whether to drop down or stay high, and yeah, it just turned into a big mess. We'll see if Maddie can pull up a few replays here for us and uh, go over that one, but uh, that's a that's a big one. That's the one. Yeah, that's what you don't want to have happen at the front of the pack, but yeah, Pearson getting into the back of Hedersheed. Around he goes. Jaden Russell, nowhere to go. Um, a lot of big names taken out in that one. Jason Martin got clipped pretty heavily as well. So you can see, see with this replay as yeah, they, they go around. They were going to start getting more aggressive as well too, yeah. so... Um, while you're watching this, I'm going to just jump over to another channel and check on, on the Zero Three 3 car. See if so there it is. The same thing that happened with um, the 23 Jaeger. It's just happened there. So you can see Pearson on that outside, on that outside corner, and he's just going to transition down, and it's good night, Irene. Tell you what. <laughs> uh, I reckon Pearson uh, I reckon a good onboard view will be Foster for his reaction. Uh, that was a pretty good bit of off-road driving. He managed to miss his teammate, JCW, who also had a good response there. There was a lot of good saves in that race. Jason Martin and there. Matty, Matty Raymond, do you know where they go? Riley's right in the middle there. Josh got through the initial part. You see Josh at the bottom of your screen there, but he does get caught up later in the in the secondary part of this accident. So does Schroeder, as a matter of fact. So you can see Riley in there. He's got 350 of Michael Skurlock in there. Nowhere to go for the number four. Luke Traher got away with it. He's got down there. He followed Edward. Um, Jason Martin, you can see in there. A lot of cars. Stephen Williams. Uh, is that Schultz? Aiden Schultz in there too, I see. Yeah, I think Schultz got caught up. There's a lot of damaged cars out there now. Um, got Bob Clinock here in the care centre. Here we go. We're right on board with, right on board with uh, Edward Foster here into this wreck. And uh, we'll just see his evasive action. So you see it happening to Alvin to the outside. So he's gone straight down to the bottom, straight down to the grass. Good heads up driving. That's what I like to see. Really good save. Uh, got Lachlan Ako up in the booth, number 42. Uh, obviously, not what you would have wanted for the night, Lockie. Um, we saw a fantastic save earlier on when you had some equipment failure. Uh, yeah, oh, that was kind of just luck. It, the Lucky that the steering locked <clears throat> turning left, so it went down to the apron. Um, but, yeah, it was just a not been a great night. Just went from bad to worse, basically. And, uh, yeah. Now she's sitting in the sheds, getting seeing if they can put her together to do a lap or two at the end. Well, hopefully you can get back out there with a bit of duct tape and uh, some some chewing gum. Um, look, just uh, you know, one of the things at Daytona, it's luck a lot of the times, and uh, unfortunately, your luck ran out after that earlier on equipment failure. But hopefully, we will see you back in the booth in better times. Yeah, fingers crossed. The season gets better from here, but it, not not a great start anyway. <laughs> I can only get better from here, Lockie. Cheers, man.
All right, Carl. Looking through this field. Oh, sorry, go on, mate. I'm back. I've just been over and checked on on uh, Brad and, and Ruben. Ruben has got a fair bit of damage done to the front end of the car. He's hoping that with a few more cautions, he may get back on the lead lap. Uh, Brad went into the pits with 23 seconds of damage, so he's going to be uh, sitting pretty still. Yeah, I'm just looking through these top few guys here. Sorry, Carl. Looking through the top four of no damage from fifth. Well, fifth does. Luke Traher does. Hobbo's got away with it. Uh, what have we got there? We've got uh, Barry Neal. He looks pretty clean. And then you've also got Sheedy in there. So a uh, bit of a mixed bag at the front now. I honestly think that mistake from Hobson getting those tyres paid off for him. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know, it's one of those things <laughs> yeah. where the mistake actually ends up giving you an advantage. Yeah, um, he's come from nowhere to be, what, P8 now, something like that. Yeah, just, just looking down a little bit. Um, Tim Court got lucky uh, avoiding a lot of that incident as well. He's got a very clean car at the moment. So he could be in for a good run for the Locks on iRacing team, uh, of course. So their debut tonight in the Cup Series. So we'll see how they run out. Um, a few cars up there, though, that are, you know, that have done well. Wade cheating a little bit of damage on the front, but nothing too major. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they run from here because there's going to be a lot of damaged cars and there's going to be a lot of people just sort of nursing at home. Probably the, yeah. the one that got away best out of that incident is Pearson. Um, you know, it's sort of not much damage on the front of that car, luckily. He pretty much Very avoided clean. that. And, uh, yeah. yeah, he could be in for a good shout from here. I can. T uh, I don't know if you mentioned it, mate, when when I ducked out. But uh, Daniel Hudersby's car is uh, mm, very second hand. Like only used on Sundays. Yeah, no no front end, end and no bonnet. Uh, sorry, no no front end and no. Looks like uh, a long rear end. dirt track. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's the extra cooling variant of the cup car. Um, so that you shouldn't have too much problem with the old cooling factor, but it's probably not good for the aero. So we are underway again. 55 laps remaining here at Daytona. It is Pearson leading for DPR. Matt Knight up on the high line. Jason W in third position. Daiso sitting there at the moment with that damage, but he can sit under that rear spoiler and keep that car going. Oh, we've got a big wreck behind. Oh, we've got another wreck happening. Jackson. Oh, that. Jackson getting involved in that one. Um, I think it was somebody else that actually caused it. Uh, Luke Georgeson. Uh, Luke Georgeson there gets caught by Aiden Schultz, I think. Uh, Gary Wellman's right behind there at the moment. Oh, no, he's just... He's got the damage car, Luke Georgeson. Wellman's just trying to go around him and they actually caught Schultz on his outside, so... Jay okay. yeah, just uh, Oh, Jay, yeah, sorry. And just they just fumbled over each other there. They just fumbled over that slower car. Yeah, and that called out, uh, you know, one car that actually was pretty clean, unfortunately, sitting in that backpack was Danny G, and he got absolutely caught up in that. He's three laps down from that earlier incident with the pit lane, but that has absolutely destroyed his night. Same with Philip Worley, of course, uh, winner of uh, the truck race, I think. Uh... The start of the week i'm trying to remember at the start of the week now it's going oh, it goes by too quickly uh or was that the um the oh you can uh, see as well that just watching the replay denny g actually got on the brakes and he got he got hit from behind so he got pushed into that one uh by aiden Schultz. so he's in there but uh yeah just didn't react quick enough and uh, aiden's just driven straight to that wreck there not much to do on the outside there though Not much you can do in a situation like that, unfortunately. Philip Woolley, of course, winning the um, the yeah the Coliseum race, uh, the Clash. That's the word I'm looking oh, for. That's the Clash. Yep. Yep. There we go. Uh, <laughs> oh, memory! I wish you worked better sometimes. It would make my life a lot easier. <laughs> um, but yeah, unfortunately for him tonight, not working out so well. But his teammate, with teammate Neil Pearson. It is going pretty well for him at the moment. Still in the lead of the race, still with a very clean car. Uh, JCW, Edward Foster there, all looking relatively clean. And then you've got a lot of damaged cars behind them. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Yeah, lucky for a caution. They'll, they'll get them repaired as best they can. I can, I can hear on the radio that uh, a few uh, drivers are getting a little bit antsy out there. Um, it's, it's getting down to uh, business. And... Um... They're not as patient and uh, willing as they were earlier. 
So I've got to ask, Carl, you, have we got one or two green-white checkers, Troy's? It'll be one. One? one? Yeah. Just the one. So, yeah, if it comes to a green-white checker, you just get the one try, one chance of that one, um, as is tradition. So hopefully hopefully we don't get to see a green-white checker. Hopefully we get to see a beautiful run to the end with lovely racing. Uh, but I get the feeling we might indeed see that happen tonight, uh, as the aggression factor turns up, as is tradition. As I said in the last... 50 laps of the 500, usually the aggression dial gets turned up to 11, and uh, we start to see a few more incidents playing out across the race. Yeah. So another quick, quick, quick trivia for you. The first uh, 500 was held in 1959. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the it was a photo finish. How how many days do you think? It will talk to adjudicate and who won the, the first 500 oh, yes. it's Paddy that won it i know that much yep um i think it was a week and a half no nah, three days oh okay. i said i was going to say three yep three days to to decide a winner at least this here tonight we won't have to worry about that because we'll ground a 500 winner at the end of this yeah we certainly will the yeah, ants scarf they turn a 500 winner that's a that's a big Pro, that's pretty prestigious. Get your name put on that honour roll. Definitely. And a shout out to uh, to everyone. Just a quick note to keep up to date with everything that's happening with Anscar. Make sure you stop by anscar.com for all the latest news, all driver profiles, and everything. And the man behind the buttons is uh, looking after that web page. And so make sure you go check it out. Big thank you to Mr. Maddie Hunter for all the hard work he puts in. Of course, also one of the admins of the Anscar series. So not just doing all the hard work on cameras, getting all of these graphics set up, getting the website set up, but also having to deal with the admin side of things as well. A man that has no free time whatsoever, but we really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Maddie Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're working our way down. We're almost, what are we, got probably about 20 cars on the lead lap now. Let me have a quick look. 24 um, cars on the lead yeah, lap yeah, at the yeah. moment. Uh, so, so we've got uh, 20, about 30-ish cars still in the race, I think. A fair few of them, though, are pretty much zombie cars. They are just crawling around uh, trying to get some, uh, trying to get some uh, engines and bits from other cars to try and get them across the finish line, I think, because there's not much left of them. Yeah, certainly. Luke Traher's still there, my first pick of the day. So, uh, his form lately, he's sort of just, he's stumbling across wins at the moment. So keep an eye on that 43 as we go back. Green flag racing once again, lap 149 of 200. Yeah, of course, we saw Luke taking the victory in the truck series, uh, which uh, was a really fun race, actually. It was good to see. And uh, we do have the replay of that up on the Facebook page. The truck series won't be uh, broadcast all season long, but we may get the odd one coming through. Uh, of course, we've got the Thunder Series broadcast as well. Head over to the Ants Card page and you'll be able to find out all the details on that on Wednesday nights. And then the Cup Series, of course, will be broadcast here on Performance E Streaming uh, on Facebook and hopefully YouTube when that works after a few technical issues tonight. But uh, we are getting everything out at least, which is the important thing. And we're getting some great racing, as is always the tradition in Ansgar. What we'd love to see. Pearson in the lead at the moment. Looks like Philip Wally going into pit lane, needing to come through for a possible penalty. So a few drivers darting into pit lane just in the background there. But it is a mass at the front. We've still got pack racing going on. Watch out for Timmy Corn as well, because that car is very clean. So he could have a good run towards this end of the race if he can avoid some damage uh, in his debut race. We've got a few new faces up there as well. So good to see. Matt, uh, we've got Wade Sheedy up there as well, having a good run. We saw him sticking out for that long stint. Goes very well for that one. Matt Knight as well in there with a relatively clean car. So quite a few drivers still capable of winning this will we see a rookie taking the flag or will it be one of the veterans we will find out soon with 50 laps remaining here at daytona yes yeah, so there's a 16 car breakaway at the front here now between i guess you could call it the uh the second hand car lot behind and the uh, the guys out front so wellman um somehow he's got himself back into this race so he's had a he's had an up and down day wellman uh, currently running 16th and just right on the back of this lead pack at the moment. So uh, see if he can do anything. He, if, if there's anyone that's uh, got luck on his side at the moment, it's, it's, it's probably him. 
Yeah, well, we've had one of those races that's been incredibly busy. Um, you know, you get that sometimes where it is, uh, it's almost like you've had about 700 things happen inside that race. And he's definitely had that happen tonight. So he could be one of those drivers that comes in there and sneaks in there at the end. Watch out for Stevie Dub as well. He's been sitting there. He's got a bit of damage on the front. But Stevie Dub, one of those drivers that can always do well, but he is dropping off the pack a little bit. And that aero damage is not going to help him out. That high line at the moment is getting a really good run, though. You can see JCW up there with Dyson. Dyson probably doesn't want to jump down in front of his teammate right now because he's got a lot of front end damage and that's not going to help out the speed. So he's going to need to try and stick behind somebody right now. Yeah, so you can see those three cars jumping off as well. They've, they've got damage, so they've lost the pack. Um, so the last guy there, I think, is the 25. So that'll be Matt Knight there in behind Bradley Ellison. Um, we've got a lap car come up ahead. The, the push I saw on Josh Carroll Warden earlier. Looked a bit rough as we got one drops down there into the bottom line, which is the uh, for Hobbit. Uh, Hobbit, that's him. Yeah, Hobbit. <laughs> that's the yeah. guy Hobson. So he's dropped down in front of him, and uh, we got the the thirty five that an Atari Autosports still just riding that top line. I don't mind that at all, but they look like they're almost ready to transition down to the bottom. Yeah, so Shady looking be... to try and make a move at the moment, um, and you've got Tim Gaunt in there as well. So it's uh, yeah, so good, good run from Timmy. Yeah, yeah, well done, well done to uh, Zach Long lads. New team running in the Cup Series this year, so uh, good to see them having a good oh, race up front. This is going to hurt that high line. JCW drops down. Andrew Dyson's going to be leading, and he's got that front end damage. So how much is that going to affect the speed there? Those drivers are going to want to try and push him along. This yeah. could be painful. And it's only one lap. Uh, it's only lap one fifty three of two hundred. So uh, we still don't need to really go too hard racing as uh, Dyson drops down now and leaves Sheedy out there with uh, Timmy behind him. Yeah, you can see uh, Neil Pearson just making a little bit of a gap for Daiso there just to slot him into that gap. So it's a four-car high line at the moment. Brad Allison there just at the back as well. He could jump up onto that high line, help push it up a little bit. But it is Wade Sheedy in the lead of there. So we've got a couple of newcomers to the Cup Series in Sheedy and Tim Korn up on that high line at the moment. Then Greg Spencer uh, sitting in behind them with Barry Neal. Uh, so quite a good run. Barry Neal trying to get down to the low line, it looks like, possibly dropping in behind Matt Knight. So that's going to hurt that high line a little bit. Uh, they've lost an extra bit of horsepower and the extra car in there, so they're now pretty much a free car run. Uh, but the front is pulling away from Foster. So you can see up the front at the moment, Foster is sort of falling off the front pack. JTW leading at the moment ahead of Hobson, Daiso and Pearson. Foster sort of just got a bit of a gap between himself and Pearson, and that could start to affect it. Oh, as they're coming up to a lapsed car that's staying on the low line. Who was oh, that? Yeah. That was uh, that was Josh Micklemore, I think. Uh, just trying to stay as... Uh, sorry, Schroeder, sorry. Um... Very similar paint jobs, unfortunately, from a distance, missing the bonnet. Couldn't quite see, but Schroeder was on that uh, on that apron. JCW just absolutely very lucky to get through that. That could have really hurt. Foster's managed to get up onto the back of Pearson, but now he's starting. To, now the uh, back line is starting to struggle as they get past Joe Schultz. I think that is. And uh, look, you can see these cars trying their best to get up there, but now. Uh, now Luke Traher has kind of lost the rest of the pack, and this could be this could be it for that pack. Now they're going to start falling off, and it's going to be a five-car race at the front. Yeah, it's really scattered that pack, hasn't it? That lead pack is completely obliterated after being nice and orderly. Yeah, there's only five of them out there. That's keeping pace, and uh, the one behind there will probably drop back to the other pack too, which is Luke Traher. I think that's not even Luke. I think that might be um... uh, that. Luke in the middle there, so Luke's sort of in the middle. Jason no Martin, lane. yeah, right, uh, yeah. Jason Martin leading that second pack at the moment with Timmy Corn, Allison, Spencer, Knight, um, uh, Barry Neal, and uh, Wade Sheedy there. So they've got a pack that they could, could form up, but they need to form it up properly because they are really dropping pace at the moment. They are so much slower than this front pack. They're about two seconds a lap slower at the moment. They definitely need to do it very quickly, otherwise they're not going to get back unless there's a caution. 
Remember, we're looking at one more stop. If we remain green here tonight, it is going to be one more stop for all of these cars. They're going to need to get some fuel to get to the end of this race. Nobody can make it home from here. Um, so everybody's going to need to come into pit lane. Uh, it'll be around about 23 laps, I reckon, until we see them coming into pit lane. Um, there are a few cars out there that came in towards the end of that last stint. So at the moment, Matt Knight is the car with the most fuel. He has got, he can go an extra 10 lap, laps over the leaders. So he's got about 10 laps in the lead pack. So that could be some useful stuff for him later in this race. Yeah, it could be, but do you, do you then come in and take a shorter stop um, and run with the tyres you've got or take two tyres and, and just top off when those, those guys in front of him come in? Yeah, the big issue at the moment is Jason Martin's leading this pack and he has damage, so he's going to jump up there and it is going to be Tim Corn going to be leading the charge right now. Jason Martin's going to have to try and slot in behind these guys and start pushing because that's why they've been losing so much time. They've got a car with front-end aero damage, which is not helping them out at all. I think Tim court has got a little bit of front-end aero damage as well. So again, there's not really any clean car in that group that can lead. So they're going to be struggling to get that thing working. Martin's got to be careful here not to lose that draft. It's very dangerous to go up that high, especially if they're all flat out. Um, he's lost it. I'm going to tell you, I'll call it now. He's going to lose that. Uh, yeah. Oh, I just checked up with that lap car, so he may just be able to get back there. But if they didn't check up, he was gone. Yeah, he was lucky there with that lap mm. car, definitely. Because that's, that's definitely let him catch back up to that the rear end of that pack. Bradley Allison looking to the outside, not satisfied to sit behind uh, Timmy Corn, not happy to, to ride there. Oh, was Martin has a little moment of his own back there behind uh, Luke, so... This is dangerous. To, uh, freight train, Timmy, on the outside. Bradley's uh, had enough. He says, I want to lead the pack. I want to get this car back up there. He feels like he's got a faster car. Yeah, it's it's dicey stuff now. And, and it's, as I say, it's the problem as you get to this stage, the race, especially when you've got damage, things like that. It just makes things a lot harder. Well, we've only now got, what, 40 laps to go. So, um, yeah, Brad... Brad and that second pack definitely need to get on the rear end of the tail. But well, um, probably probably starting to get a little bit too far behind now. Yeah, they've dropped a fair amount of time there. Seven seconds back from the leader at the moment. That is a lot of time to be losing. And those cars up the front are all pretty fresh as well. The only car with mage damage is Dyson. And he's sitting nicely in the middle at the moment, so that's not affecting him. He's just got some aero damage, so that's not going to be too bad for him. If they can get it hooked up and actually start working together, they might be able to close in on the rest of this pack. Uh, but they've got to do some hard work at the moment. Uh, and I think it's going to be a troublesome thing to get there. Well, you'd be so, happy, you'd be happy, Dave, with two, two taxis out front. Two taxis, got two couple of Fords out front, eh? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. <laughs> you, you, you now know that, that you're going to be known as the taxi driver for, with me. World's, world's <laughs> fastest taxi driver, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's one thing that some people may not realise either, both Carl and Dave, that we may be hard competitors and, and, and want to race hard, but we still all have fun and, and hang, hang it on each other and, and we oh, take it as good as, as good as we get. We give as good as we get. Exactly right. And if you can't, if you're not out here having fun, there's no point doing it. To be honest, uh, you'd only end up breaking something. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you've got to be having fun, otherwise, you yeah, pack it in. Mate, and that's one of the great things about the community, and, and also with a couple of the different leagues. Of course, we've got a good amount of uh, a good camaraderie between the drivers, and it makes things so much more fun when you're racing against each other when you've got that community spirit and just 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 having fun and enjoying it really it does make a big difference yeah absolutely yeah. And, and and you'll have on-track rivalries for sure you're going to have that every time if it's competitiveness you're going to have that competitiveness but uh everybody has their moment and they all get over it and we just continue to race on like i said you got to have fun like yes in the time and in place for it but uh yeah I enjoy the little on-track rivalries between a few different drivers and whatever else along the way. 
Um, next week it's someone else, and next week it's someone else again. So, <laughs> so it's still part of the deal. But the best thing I love is that you, you, you can you have a wreck, hit escape, and you're not putting a, a, a race car back on the trailer and going, mm, where am I going to get that top wing from? When I, where am I going to get that, it. that front wing five. from? Yeah. Although we do, have, description. <laughs> sorry, we do have one injury tonight. Unfortunately, Scotty Griffiths uh, got a big whip on his wheel after that last wreck and uh, has hurt his hand, unfortunately. So, so heading to the doctor on that one. So hopefully Scotty Griffiths is not too injured on that one. And this is one of the things that even though it's uh, sim racing, you know, there's not much chance of injury. Uh, these direct, direct drive wheels, force feedback, things like that, they can still hurt when it goes wrong. Oh yeah, they have safety switches on them for a reason. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I have known um, someone to break a thumb uh, with a uh, direct drive, uh, whipping that hard. You got to do the old. Um, you got to do the old Danica Patrick. Take your hands off the steering wheel. <laughs> Pretty much, that's what, that's what Luke does. <laughs> yeah, always made a big deal out of it. <laughs> You've also got to remember not to stand over the steering wheel when you plug it in, because otherwise that can be quite painful to the old groin area. <laughs> Especially if you're not wearing pants. <laughs> oh, oh, too much information, Dave. <laughs> That's more of a lock issue, isn't it? I was going to say, it's only an issue if you, if, to some people, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. Still a little bit off the back of that pack there. He's got to be careful that he doesn't go too far out, otherwise he will lose that drive because he's... You just can't sit too far back, so we've just got to keep an eye on that. Yeah, they're getting a bit wobbly. Um, Neil Pearson had a little bit of a moment as well. so Which probably is the a... reason why Edward's checked up a little bit. If he checks up too much, yeah, you drop off. Yeah, they're starting to just get a little bit squirrely again. So interesting to see here as they're getting up to these lap cars. and It does appear that, you know, as you're passing those cars, that side draft causes a little bit of action here, and it just makes the car a little bit unstable and just causes it to wiggle a little bit more than you expect. Yeah, definitely. And Edward's just, just hanging in there, actually. Now it's Pearson. Yeah, Pearson. They've got to be careful not off. to lose this, yeah. They've got about a car length between them at the moment, and that could be dangerous. They need to really get a run here. Foster's going to have to push Pearson to actually get them back there because um, they could start dropping off a little bit. They just, just managed to get making, back yeah, on making it the back grid. Down, yeah. so meanwhile, yeah. meanwhile, that secondary pack has dropped to 10 seconds. So, you know, as I said, they, they just don't have that speed, unfortunately. It is Greg Spencer at the moment leading with Manny Knight, um, Barry Neal and Tim Court there. So they have got a pack formed, but they just can't quite get up to the rest of this group. These cars up front, uh, other than Daiso, are pretty clean, so they're able to run at a bit more speed. Yeah, well, they're a second a lap slower. So the guys at the front run a 46.5 JCW, and then uh, Greg Spencer ran a 47.4. So... Basically, a, laps, uh, a second a lap slower at this rate, and they've got the bigger pack. So, yeah, it could be the damaged cars as well, but the guys at the front are just doing a good job. I get the feeling that we might see Dyson start to struggle soon. I reckon he's got some cooling issues. Uh, he's starting to really have to pull out of that draft and get, get some fresh air on that car. And I wonder if we might see that engine go pop in the next five to ten laps. You should be able to, might even be able to jump on board with these new dashes. They might be able to uh, see the, see if they're flashing red at all. Uh, I'll try. You can see his revs there, it looks all right. Yeah, maybe not on the uh, dash here, because they're only showing zero anyway, so. Yeah, they don't show the temperatures, unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately we can see yeah. the gear. We can yeah. see the gear and the revs, but we can't see the temps, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a shame. I know. Uh, that's, what, that's what it's like, you can see on board here, in this little pack. Not much vision, you can't see over the wing in front of you. you sort of just you're just following the rear bumper of the car in front of you. It, it can be pretty daunting for uh, someone who hasn't done any sort of restricted plate racing at all. Yeah, it's you know when you're not used to running up the front of the pack, things like that, it could really throw you off when you get sort of forced up there um, in these cup cars. It's a scary prospect sometimes. Oh, lap car stayed oh. low. Josh JCW was calling. I heard him on the radio asking him to go high. He stayed low, but no harm, no fair. He was already way off the pace, so he got away with it. Looks like, uh, looks like we've got Raymond Yeager in the infield care center. Just drag him up, say hello. Welcome to the booth, Mr. Yeager. Unfortunately, here in the race, not after it. We've had you in the booth a few times this week, but not in the best circumstances this time around. No, not 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 uh, not good at all tonight. So disappointing that the one that matters uh, didn't end well. 
So I apologise for putting the curse on you. Um, <laughs> you can blame me for that one. All yeah. calm. Yeah, yeah, all calm. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously quite a lot of damage to that card. Getting caught up in one of those big incidents. Uh, we saw one of those big wrecks. Is that you pretty much out of this race now? Or are you going to manage to get back out and try and creep across the line get a couple of positions? Oh, uh, no, I think we're done. I got back out after the initial damage. We only had four minutes the first time around. But uh, she just let go now, so we're 31 minutes now. So I think that's probably us done for the day. Um, yeah, unfortunately, just we were trying to catch back up to the lead pack, and, and Maddie Knight just got into my rear bumper and uh, spun me around. So, oh, well, it happens. But, yeah, disappointing that it happens in the big one. So, oh, well. Big shame. Look, congratulations on a really good week, but unfortunate to see you in the booth this early in the big one. We hope to see you later on in the year. Yeah, look, we'll be back next week and we'll try and qualify in the Auto Club. Good luck. See you later, mate. mate Cheers. Uh, see you, guys. Yeah. See, it's, it's yeah. always the trouble having Ra Ra Raymond Yeager back because uh, I've got Matty Ray and Raymond Yeager and they always confuse me. Uh, every year, manages to confuse me when I'm saying it. <laughs> <laughs> You can hear the disappointment in his voice there. Such a shame he's had a, such a great week and, and they had the 500 and like it, it has for him. Yeah, it is very painful when that happens. And, you know, he's had such a good week as well, as we say. He's really been strong. Um, we saw him in Jules getting a good finish and as well as in the trucks, I think it was, for the Xfinity. It was one of those two. Um but uh, tonight, not so lucky, unfortunately. And uh, look, eventually the luck runs out, sadly. And tonight it was indeed that. But up the front, we have JCW, a man that has had a few good runs on the super speedways before. He's got Hobson behind him. Absolutely, yeah. Previous winner. And uh, look, would love to get another one on next to his name. Uh, but he's going to have to try and defend against Hobson later in this race. Uh, we've seen towards the closing stages that sometimes it can be troubles. It can be a bit tricky to pass on that last lap. So sometimes you have to start working on on that sort of like free to go area. What would be your game's plan once we get through these final set of pit stops and get towards the end? Well, I was just thinking the same thing. I was just looking at the the, um, the laps and seeing what time they'd be in, and it's going to be about one sort of. 188, 190, around that mark. So that's very late in the race. And, uh, mate, at that point, if you make a mistake on pit road, that that's it. That's your race over, really. So it's going to be about, this is going to have to be your best pit stop all day, execution, uh, hit your marks, do everything right. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how they work it here because you've got two Nata Nata Natari cars in here. Uh, you've got two DPR cars. And you've got a Synergy and I can't see what the guys are at the back there, but, uh, yeah, a bit of a mixed bag here, so it's going to be interesting to see what these guys do and when they do it. Matty Ray at the back, uh, who's a couple of laps down, seven laps so down he, Matty So Ray. he won't care, so he'll just stay out for... He's only looking out for himself at the moment, so he's just looking to stay on the lead lap, so... And Aiden um, Schultz just on the back as well, so they just they just managed to slide in nicely on this pack. Um, so they, they just put themselves onto the back of this group nicely and just helping... Uh, helping reduce the drag a little bit for the rest of the cars in front. Yeah, so I'm thinking within the next 15 laps, these guys are all going to come to pit road. <clears throat> As I said, it's, it's going to win them or lose this race here, so uh, they have to execute perfectly. Just to add the stress to this yeah. one. <laughs> that little bit more stress. Oh, Neil Pearson getting just on the edge of that line again. It's just, these cars are just, just getting that little bit unstable. The drives are getting a little bit tired. It's that, that as you say, it's the fatigue setting in. You're starting to ache. You're starting to get that pain in your hand and your legs. Your feet go numb. Lower back starts to hurt a little bit. And, of course, the mental fatigue is really setting in. You probably need to go to the bathroom quickly as well. It's, oh, we got a big wreck. We've got a big wreck. Still green. Who was that? Currently still green. Uh, that was just in front of the lead pack, I think. Just trying to go back and find out who that was. Yeah, there it is. So we stay green. He's obviously down on the vapor in there. So, Tristan Trist Cop. yeah, it looks like Tristo. So, uh, yeah, big one um, for Tristo. We're going to go to replay, but we stay green at the front here. Kobe Jordan, I think, might have been the other car in that one. So, looks like Kobe and Tristan oh. got involved in that. Stevie Dub just behind them. And, oh, net code. Definitely a net code situation there from my end of things. 
because there was there was more than a gap between those two. Um, but unfortunately, a little bit of net code action has spun them around. But we are green. Yeah, we're just keeping on the pack while well, uh, we're just in this replay. So we've got a nice replay here as it calms down a little. Well, it doesn't calm down, but there's a bit half a metre between those cars. So just pure bad luck there. And how it stayed green is, is beyond me. But um, there it is. Tristan Cox in the fence. And Stevie Dub just just absolutely just, <laughs> just taking that like a boss, just champion through there. Just keeps that just car in shoulder and kept the game on. Yeah, Stevie Dub currently the lucky dog as well. So he wants to stay in that position. He wants to try and keep himself in that lucky dog spot. So yeah, absolutely. Um, and if if, if that happened, happened, if that happened to be a caution there, uh, unfortunately with him, I raced him. He wouldn't have got the lucky dog because you can't have an incident point. If you get an incident point, it goes to the next guy. So. If it says that you had a wreck, so to try and stop you from causing a collision, so you get the lucky dog, it does that. Yes, of course we uh, we, we don't worry about the live race control things like that. We just let iRacing racing sort it out. So you know it's uh, it's equal footings for everybody, and everybody's in the same one. Of course, if you are looking for some live racing say, control perfect things like opportunity. that, <laughs> we are sponsored by Twenty Four Seven Sim Services, who do offer live race control and. Uh, we'll be looking at some other bits and bobs in the future, of course. Johnny, uh, John O'Hancock over there, absolute marvellous bloke. And uh, I might remember him from a few years back being on the broadcast with me, part of the old uh, broadcasting team from years back. Um, but, yeah, get in touch with them for some more information. And, of course, one of the other sponsors of the series, maybe for the trucks, but Affinity Construction, we thank them as well. But a uh, big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us keep going. Um, and uh, yeah, it's always a pleasure to have them on board because without them, it makes well without them, it makes it a lot harder to keep these broadcasts going. While you're giving that uh, that plug away, mate, uh, I heard the 35 car call out for his pit stop, so he's he's looking to come in about lap 182. So that's three three laps from now, and uh, he's organised with the 88 Hobo. He uh, replied and uh, understood the assignment. So I'd say Hobo may go with him. So we'll just keep an eye on what happens here, but. Uh, lap 182. At least if they go early, it gives them a chance to get back in the race if, if something goes wrong. But uh, yeah, yeah. interesting. These stops, keep an eye on it. Yeah, they're just. Sorry, I was just going to say if if I heard that, I, I'd be yeah, I'd probably go in with with him. Yeah, for me, would, for yeah. me, I'd take the whole pack in with you. Yeah, that way you can. Everyone can come in, get fresh tires, and and then you fight and it fuel, out, man. and then you fight it out. Yep, that's because, it. That's, I'm on the same page there. Yeah, if you stay out, you're going to get dropped. Uh, and if you, if you, yeah, it's just a, a nice, easy, nice, easy de decision for me. Beep. Yeah, that's right. So that's for me as well. Uh, there's only what we got. It's it's five cars. So if three come in and two stay out, it's it's a no brainer really. All yeah. those guys will probably want to come come in at the same time. And even the guys behind on those two. They're racing to try to get their lead lap back or something as well. So I'd say if they come with them as well, just to try and just keep that level playing field and have a have a uh, group to draft with. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, come 20, on. just up uh, 20 laps now. It's getting very much towards the tail end of this race. It is very much close. And uh, we're going to see those green flag pit stops for the final time tonight. And it's going to be... You've got to be one want to be absolutely perfect you've got to be right on the marks you've got to make sure you don't speed in pit lane you've got to get your pit stop absolutely right to get this race won will we see anybody taking tires will we see people just not worrying about tires at all will people just take right side only there are so many little options here to do it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out well that's it your heart rate goes up a little bit here too so josh will be sizing up the pit lane as he goes by there He'll be coming in the next time by, I'd say. He'll probably get a radio call. And uh, as I said, the heart rate goes up, the nerves go up, because you know this is it. This this can make or break your race right here. Yeah. we we I, I just heard J, as JCW was coming up on the back of four to ask him to go high. And this is what we we touched on earlier, Dave, is the respect that for, for each other. Uh, as soon as he got Paul got that, that call, we could see him go straight up to the high line, run the fence, and and let the guys go up past unimpeded. Yeah, that's right. Uh, makes it a lot easier when you're single file as well. If you're multiple laps down, you, you're miles, there's no point getting involved. But uh, these guys, are, we'll see who comes. I'll tell you, they're all about to come. So here we go. Ricardo, take us through it, mate. Oh, Josh goes there early and gets the apron hard there. 
flips the apron there. They're all coming in. It's a swarm of cars. He locks up a little bit, oh. but they, they're making it in. Oh, very no, well done. Nice to done. And see. Oh, Hobo, Hobo just, splits yeah. the gap. Yeah, yeah he nice. He's not lucky not to get turned there. And as I said, those two boys are lap down. They came with them. They, they might as well just stick with it and, and see where that comes out for them. So it looks like everybody hitting their marks Ooh. nicely. Edward's really deep into his box. He's, he made it though. So just fuel only. Just fuel only for the Atari cars. Yeah. Away they go. Fuel only for everybody that I can see. Yep, Doesn't look go. like anybody decided to take tyres, which is probably the smart choice. Although, where is, is Hobo at first? Uh, I think I saw him go past. No, Hobo. Hobo's not out. No. Hobo took tyres. Oh. Hobo. Oh, me uh, Pearson's going around. Pearson just got loose on the apron. Those old tyres. Sorry to cut over you there. He's oh, oh. Man, he across. Just oh, man. Saved, it. saved it somehow. But yeah, that was a big moment for Pearson. Uh, so that's that's harm. He's running out of the pit lane. These guys have to form up here. Pearson might just drop out the back there. Hobo missed his Hobo missed his stall. So that is hurt Hobson dearly. We so called it. Run. We called it, Carl. We, I said you have to make this pit stop perfect. It's make or break time, and uh, unfortunately, it hasn't worked out for Pearson or Hobo. No, and now that front pack is really split up as well. There's there's not really anyone to work with right now. You've got Daiso sitting up with a lot of damage on that car. Foster's going to want to try and link up to JCW now. Um, yeah, it'll pay for JCW just to just to drag the brake a bit, get these guys up to them, and that'll give no one else a chance. If these two, oh, these top three can hook up, it'll be between them three. Now that lead, that second pack was about ten. 10, 15 seconds, and I think, Edward's going over any outside, so he wants to get behind Josh. He's trying to get in behind his teammate, and he's going to get it too. So that's a big that's a big move to get to that point. So that's 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 a commanding move there. Two Natari uh, cars at the front of this little pack. Yeah, has, has um, I'm sorry, oh, I'm, I'm a bit dumb here. Has, has Ed, has Ed uh, had a 500 win? Uh, no. Um, Greg Spencer is missing his stall as well. Just makes a light, slight little mistake there. That's like Barry Neal in the lead of the race, but that second pack coming in. If they can hook up, they might be able to catch up um, to the rest of that pack. It's going to be a tight one. Um, you know, it's going to be really tricky. There's three cars in that pack of Carol Walden, Foster, and Dyson at the moment. You've still got a few cars out with Wade Sheedy and Barry Neal. Uh, I think Sheedy and Neil are going to stick it out for as long as they can, but I don't think they're going to go much longer. Uh, in all honesty, they're probably going to yeah. need to come in, yeah, and they, they do come. indeed come in now. Um, so that is that. So pit stops are finally done. Oh. With Fifteen laps to go. No, nice, uh, nice big uh, shake, cradle, and roll there from uh, Sheedy, come, trying <laughs> to get that pulled up. Then, yeah, definitely. Oh, I'm just watching these front three now. I'm just trying to work out what's playing through their heads. I'm, I'm thinking, right, what's Edward going to do here? Does he, does he just take the team win and be the team player and push the 35 all the way? Because it's run and done if that's the case. Does Dyson try to get right on that outside panel of uh, Edward on that quarter? He, he will, if he gets there, will slow a bit down. He can maybe get to the 35 then that way. So it's, it's, they've got to start playing it out in their heads how that's how it's going to end here. They do. Mm. Pearson. Five don't seconds. get another caution as well. Sorry, just kind of don't get another caution. If there's another caution, mate, it's back on for everybody. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Oh, you know, the 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 play the te team, as you said. Uh, do you, if you JCW, do you lead the race and then let Ed try and get through, being team boss and and not having having a five hundred, or do you, do you really say, ah, uh, this might, I'm, I want a second one. Well, that's it. Do you, do you, do you give the boss the, a chance at a 500? Or do you just take the second one, mate? Because JCW knows how to get it done here. He's done it in the past. Or do you uh, spoil the party and um, get Edward up there? And if they do, what does Daiso do? Who does he pick? Does he go three wide? Does he talk with someone else? Does he go to the apron? Who knows? Uh, I'm going to predict a, a three wide finish. Uh, with these three guys, like I've done plenty of racing with, with th the three of them, and they are. Uh, I guess they all want the win, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know it's, it's, it. What what happens here? Like it's it's a big decision because it's oh, either gonna win you a race or cost the team a race, or we could do anything, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the other thing that could happen is come into the tri-oval and all three of them take each other out, and then someone in that second pack comes through 
and says thanks very much. Yeah, exactly right. And we've seen that in the past. So if these guys get racing, these guys get into it and they make contact, mate, it opens it right up. So this this thing ain't over yet. There's, there's still cars in it that aren't even in this picture at the moment. So uh, yeah. these guys, we planted over in our head. How are they going to work this last lap? How are they going to make it work? Whether they're going to just go with the two? They've got lap cars side by side oh. in front of them here. This is scary. This is scary. Yeah, oh, there oh, is. Oh, no. It is a disaster from the front pack. No. Oh, that the, the radio. That was just crazy. Yeah, that, that's wild. So that's. Oh, the, the race radio is lighting up. Uh, and, and I'll tell you what. So. Yeah, I would be going off my brain also. Uh, with, with what, 11 laps to go and a lap car does that. I'm sorry. I'm going to call it and that's just stupidity. That, oh, uh, that was disastrous. That a really silly spot. And a skull just, I think, just caught daydreaming there. Just absolutely in the middle there. And that has really hurt Foster. Uh, who has dropped down? I think he's actually having to come. He actually had to come into pit lane, I think. So yeah, he's in the pit lane. He's kind of lane. So he might, I'm not sure what there could be a meatball yeah. up there. No, he actually got spun into oh, pit lane. Oh yeah, so. he's got a penalty just to add salt. Add salt. That's terrible. Yeah, that was just uh, the caught napping there from the lap car, and that is just an absolute disaster. Um, yeah. wouldn't be surprised to see a uh, so, sort of you've got to go possibly sort of. Uh, oh, I know what you're trying to say, yeah. Carl, and, and I'm sorry to say, race, sure. yeah, I, I'm, I'm not as you know, I, I like to race, race when I can, but I'm sorry to say that if I was admin, um, doing the post race re review, there'd be definitely a penalty and probably one or two race penalty there. That's just, yes. Yeah, that is, that's not what we'd like to see, but that has broken up that little thing at the front. It's now JCW and Dyson there. Now, Dyson with that damage, JCW with damage as well now. So both of those cars have got a bit of damage on the front of them. JCW probably got the cleaner of the two cars. This has put Pearson in third. He's about seven seconds off the lead. Then you've got Brad Allison in fourth. Jason Martin in fifth somehow. Martin, after getting caught up in about four or five incidents, is still in fifth position. Matt Knight in sixth. Tim Corn seventh. Brenton Hobson and Wade Sheedy battling it out for eighth and ninth. Riley Curtis in P10 at the moment. So we were talking before, how is it all going to play out? That wasn't in the damn script. No. <laughs> no. So, uh, oh. Race changing, mate. Major race changing incident there. So now it's it's... Um, Daiso and, and Josh so as I said before Josh knows how to get it done but look behind them they've got two lap cars there they can help out either one of these drivers just uh, just give me five and I'll run out and I'll stick some oil out of turn four uh, <laughs> mate, and, and I'm looking at that uh, what is it the fit, the 28 or the or something like that I think that's Jaden Russell in behind yeah Jaden Russell in behind I'm pretty sure um, you got Russell it's going to be very there, interesting so, it's be very um, interesting to see which drivers they go with because they will have a they will have a bearing on this race to see this if they if they stay in there, they can have a big effect on how who wins this race. It's gonna be a uh... for me. Oh, I'd, look... I'd love them for them to drop out and let these two just race it out, uh, but they don't have to. They can they can mate if they. Question... I like oh, Dice as my mate. I'm gonna push him to win. Go on, Carl. Question is like is can Dyson do anything from that damage on the front end? I mean, as soon as he jumps out of that drop, after he is yeah, really, that's... really struggling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Josh's at front end there. Josh got a big dent there. It's it's a V shape in the front of yeah. Josh's car. So they both got damage. So I'm telling you, if if Dyson gets on that outside rear quarter, he'll drive around Josh. It's going to be a drag race, I think. I think we're going to come into the out of turn four, and it's going to be a drag race to try able. Yeah, well, and, we and get... as I said, it's those those lap cars, mate, they're going to play a big part if they stay in this race. Will we get a photo finish here tonight and have to take a couple of hours to work out who won it? <laughs> I have not. Um, <laughs> it's going to be very close. There is nothing that separates these two cars at the moment. We've got six and a half laps remaining. Uh, this race is going to come down to the wire. Um, unfortunately, 
Uh, well, fortunately for Neil Pearson, he's sort of in no man's land at the moment, but he's got a good gap between himself and Brad Allison. Uh, they've got a nice pack running, but they can't do anything to catch up to Pearson as it stands. Yeah, that's right. And as I said, one of you guys said before, don't rule out a late caution here as well, and that'll change it all again. Just so long as um, we can get get the uh, decision tonight, I, I, I've got to go to work at one o'clock in the morning, so I don't, <laughs> I don't want to be waiting for three days. <laughs> oh, well, hopefully we won't have to wait that long. Um, but this has been a yeah, it's been a classic <coughs> really, hasn't it? It's been one of those races that's had so many different things happen. We have had the drama in the last stages, and we've still not finished yet. We've still got five laps remaining, uh, and anything can happen in five laps. A fair few more lap cars now who look hooking up to the back of this group. Um, yeah, that so, makes me nervous too. So that, that just adds fuel to the fire. So what's going to happen here, mate? I'm telling I, you what, I, they're coming. They're going to have a bearing on the result of this race. These lap cars. So don't don't discount them. Is that Stevie Dub there or uh, Gary Wellman? Well, Gary, Gary. No teammates in there though. So they're all oh. they're all their own. They've got their own agendas. Yep. They've got two drivers in front of them who they really shouldn't care about. Be interested to see what happens here. Someone, someone's going to do something. Well, uh, I, I, I still reckon maybe we, we're going to a green white. Well, one car they're catching up to. Speaking of teammates, is Stevie Dub. Um, Stevie Dub is uh, is the a couple of cars in front at the moment. He's just ahead. So next car up is Kobe Jordan, and then it's Stevie Dub. Um, oh, so so it, out for a look. Yeah, yeah. If Stevie Dub could link up with uh, Daiso, then you've got two teammates together. That could be an interesting little uh, interesting little play for the end of this race. We've got four laps remaining. It's very much getting to the end of it. Um, this is still anybody's race. It is a two-car race now. We've gone from a pack of 20-odd cars to a pack of two cars in the race. Is it going to be Carol Walden? Is it going to be Dyson? Could we see disaster at the end? Could Pearson cross the line in first? We've seen things like that happen before. Anything can happen. Don't look away. Who is going to win the first race of 2022 for the Cup season, for the championship points, for Daytona? Who is going to get their name on that list? Well, that's it. We're working lap 197 200. It's business time. It's almost time. It's almost yeah. over. Yeah, and, and people thought these cars were going to be boring to drive. And, oh, and, yeah, uh, much better mate, than much. Oh, mate, th this... Nice this night. Yeah, these cars have... Um, I've... So I'll say taking it to the next level of um, oval track racing. Yeah, in the draft they are so much better than the last generation. They are much more fun to drive. Yeah, that, there's been much more fun race to call, much more entertainment out there on track as well. There's been incidents, there's been a bit of everything out there at the moment. And, uh, and it only just got heightened not too long ago as well. So th this race has had everything. So yeah, Dyson, okay. having a look, oh, Josh just, just blocked it. So here we go, starting to start to get racing here. So Dice had a little look to the outside of the 35. Josh made Josh made a little kink to the outside just to try and block it. What's oh, going to happen geez. here? But, yeah. but two more laps. We're coming on two laps to go. We're at that yeah. stage, as I said, that you sort of need to start making that move on this with two laps to go. And Dyson looks like he's trying to make it happen. He's got Jane Russell behind him trying to help out. Jane Russell, a lot of damage on that car though. The, this is basically who has got the least damage at the moment. Who can get that car towards the front? Dyson is going to have to try something, though. He's going to be outside. If he can get outside line formed here, he could just absolutely steamroller past JCW, but he needs help from those cars behind him. I'll tell you oh, what, both... He comes to run down the back straight. Yeah, both of those cars would be bricks at the moment. I think Dyson was just looking to see how much speed he had as soon as he gets out of the draft and just trying to get an idea if he's got to run. Will we see him try and make a run for that line on that last lap? Will we get some help from behind? It's going to be close. The white flag will be showing very shortly. Here we go, I baby. White flag. For it. Here we go. What's going to happen, guys? The white flag is out. It is between JCW and Andrew Dyson for the 500. Who is going to get it here? Will we see heartbreak? Will we see joy? Who is going to get this race yeah. win? Dyson yeah. looking to try and make it work. Can't quite make it happen gonna, at the moment. Look for it. They're, go, they're going to catch out that car, and that's going to play a big part here. JCW is going to get a nice bit of draft. I think it's Danny G in front of him. Gives him a nice bit of a run there. Oh, Gets a little bit too. of a gap there. So he's managed to get a little bit of a gap. Will Dyson be able to make this one work? They're getting around the oh. final corner. 
JCW going up high, he gets a bit loose. Dyson running up. Oh, oh, Dyson. Oh. JCW into Dyson. Oh, JCW kicks Dyson. it again. Dyson's got around. It is JCW's going to JCW's get the win. Getting the win. JCW will be He's getting get the it. win. The 35 in the victory in the Tardy Roto Sports at Dyson. Who's coming second? Dyson trying to limp home second. Pearson's coming up to him. Pearson is limping oh. round. And oh, it is Dyson, Dyson who comes home second. second. Wow, he still managed to get home second after all that. And look at this pack behind him here. The miners' places here. Four wide across the line. Whoa! Oh, shit. it is crazy action as they get across the line oh, for that was final position. Also, was parked up, mate. That was crazy. Man, those lap cars, they... I don't know, they caused a bit of havoc oh, the uh, back in the race. And it was Brad Allison who came home in P4 in that secondary pack ahead of Jason Martin. Wade Sheedy coming home in his first cut race in sixth with Matt Knight on his first race in seventh. Hobbo had to settle for P8 in the Antimicorn. Again, got another, got another uh, rookie in at the top ten in ninth. And Riley Curtis comes home in P10 at the end of that race. Good finish for Riley Curtis. Yeah, I was just watching the replay there, that turn three incident. So Dyson's just jinked to the outside. Josh has gone to block. He has to. Um, so it's forced on both of the track. Dyson looks like he's half loose there. And then Josh keeps coming up. So it may get looked at after the race. Um, it's side-to-side -side contact. They looked like they were basically going to wreck each other no matter what. Somehow Josh survived. And Dyson gets turned by Schroeder, I think. That is right, yeah, was, right at the yeah, end there. Yeah. I was going to say, did Dyson get touched from behind? Yeah, so he ended up getting a, you know, a helping hand and get finished up there as uh, Josh managed to uh, dodge all the bullets that were all around him and uh, won the, run the run to the right, uh, checker flag, I should say. So my question is, did we have a straight panel on a straight car on a straight car anyway? Uh, I don't think so. Not anymore. <laughs> we did, but I don't think we do anymore. There are very few cars out there that look like they are damage free in all honesty. I think uh, I think there was barely any. I think if you came home clean tonight, you weren't trying hard enough. I was it was a bit like that tonight, wasn't it? You had to put it all on the line there at some point through the through the race, and uh, yeah, um, nice win to JCW, and we'll see what happens post race. And I said those cars on the inside, the, the like the Jaden Russells and the Ruben Phelps, they stayed out of it. Those boys went race up and head on. They just held on the other line. Those boys did all that on their own. So uh, respect and fair play to those guys that were behind them. Denny yeah. G sort of put a put a uh, cat amongst the pigeons by staying on the low line there. Um, probably would have rather him go high just to make it a bit more straightforward. But as we've seen tonight, um, there's no straightforward. <laughs> no. Well, Jaden Russell and Gary Wellman were racing with each other as well. So Jaden Russell managed to just come home ahead of Gary Wellman in P13. So, uh, you know, they were in their own little race as well. So they didn't want to get involved in the leaders as well. <laughs> that, Try not to get involved in the leaders. That was done, well done by, by Gary, you know, going, going drop into the down to the rear to come back in the finish in that top 15. That's, that's really good with the luck he's had. As you can see there, so Josh goes for the block there. You're watching a slow motion replay. So he gets Dyson loose at the top, and then Josh just continues to go. So just walls Dyson up there. So whether or not that can be looked at. Yeah, I think they were, they were just, um, it's probably going to be just a racing incident. They were both banging doors and whatever else. Look at Wellman there, right up into the wall there in front of JCW. He actually tags JCW here, manages somehow not to spin. So Dyson gets there. So that, Wellman comes down, clips to the back of JCW, just there, and somehow got away with it. And then they all sort of just went across the line, and Ruben Phelps and Jaden Russell just stayed out of it altogether. Yeah, that and, was a that was an absolute crazy finish there. And and Daiso somehow you can see him spin in the background, gets from there, and still finishes P two in this race. So that's that's unbelievable because that that would have been had so oh. much damage. That car would have been so damaged. Absolutely. Just beats his teammate Pearson to the line there. So uh, Pearson just runs home in third, just behind him here at full speed. Yeah, As Pearson. much as he could. And then Daiso pulls up on the track here, and there's a massive pack comes in behind him, and it just chaos ensues. Watch this replay here. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> I've never seen that. That's crazy. Uh, Absolute uh, chaos there. Yeah, Pearson was full front. He almost, almost got past Dyson <laughs> at the end, but uh, Dyson just managed to limp it across the line, get P2 in the end. A well-deserved P2 after his very adventurous race in all honesty. It was like there was a lot of action throughout that one and with the damage on that car as well. Uh, fantastic job to, to get that one home, especially in P2. Absolutely. All right, well, I think we need to uh, probably grab some guys for interviews. I don't have the authority of that, so Carl, you might have to grab them down if they're in there. Yeah. We'll have a chat to the guys. Scrolling through at the moment, just looking to grab them. We'll grab down third place finisher at Neil Pearson, so... We will grab down the third place finisher for the Daytona 500 first race of the year for the Hans Car Cup. Neil Pearson, welcome to the booth, mate. Congratulations on P3 tonight. Ah, oh, thanks, mate. Thanks. It was a good race. Yeah, um, a little bit sketchy at the end there. Um, yeah, well, um, hopefully there's something going to happen about that. Yeah, it's, uh, there was a, there was a few incidents. I mean, catching up to. Uh, Catching up to, I think it was Scurly as well with you and Foster, that really made things a lot harder. You had an adventurous race, though, towards the end, obviously. A um, bit of a mistake coming out of pit lane. Yeah, I just, um, um, you know, the tyres, I had changed them for, you know, 80 laps or something on the right side, and I just slid up a little bit into the yellow line, and it just kicked the car sideways, which is a bit disappointing. You know, like... It is what it is. I mean, I'm lucky to come back with third. Um, Matt Raymond helped me with that. You know, um, the lap car, you know, the pack would have caught me if it wasn't for him. So big thanks to Matthew Raymond. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, considering the, the adventures you had tonight and that mistake off pit, pit exit, I mean, P3 is a nice finish in the end for you. And but I'm sure it would have been nicer to get the, uh, the, uh, Get the 41 up in the first, but two cars in the top three tonight. That is a really solid start for the 2022 season for you guys. Yeah, it was a good result for DPR. Um, we had pretty strong car. I don't think our car was as strong as the Atari boys. They were very quick, especially while leading, I noticed. Um, yeah, and we're just riding along, you know, and it was just basically, you know, get that ticket into the last few laps. And unfortunately, I ruined it for myself. But I also just want to say for my um, lap 140, I think it was, um, I was trying to get out of the throttle a bit and I accidentally turned head aside and it was intentional. And yeah, just unfortunately, I was just getting a bit of a push behind and I think he was trying to go low and I just got him on the right rear and spun him around. Yeah, look, this is the the thing with the super speedways is it just takes a, just the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest moment and it's millimetres in there and it just causes a wreck like that, unfortunately. Um, and these things happen, sadly. But uh, you managed to, to split it through there and get to the end of the race. And, you know, this is a decent start for your 2022 run. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with third, possibly second. Um, and, yeah, I can't, can't complain, you know. Um, car was strong. But probably one of the better 500s a bit a part of, you know, like everyone would seem to be really courteous and giving her into each other, which is good. And just quickly, how did you find the new car? Uh, I like it. I mean, here it's not really different to the Gen 6. Um, so it's going to be next Thursday where we find out who's going to be strong or not. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see it a different track. Uh, before I let you go, Mr. Pearson, uh, the usual thing of shout out and love the sponsors. Uh, yeah, first off, uh, you guys, um, I'm not actually sure which channel is broadcasting at the moment. We're on uh, Facebook tonight. Um, so, oh, yeah, we're on Facebook. Uh, I'm not some, thinking Facebook. So, some, some minor technical issues, unfortunately, uh, with YouTube tonight. So uh, we have to broadcast on Facebook tonight, but we are on Performance Stream for the rest of the season. Oh, big shout out there to Performance Esports there for the uh, stream on Facebook. Um, and then just use your sponsors, SimRigs. Dot com, Southwell Lucent Heights, Hoist, Ben Max Mechanical, Phoenix Smokers, NP Design, and always, you know, the boys, you know, we really work well together tonight, and it's just a shame not all of us could bring it home in a decent position, but, you know, second and third's pretty good. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Pearson. We will catch you again short on soon. Yeah, hopefully next week. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs>
<laughs> See you, mate. <laughs> See you, mate. Neil Pearson there, DPR. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, so it looks like Dyson's got muted. Uh, we'll try and put Andrew Dyson down. Sorry, I don't think I can read on my actual screen at the moment. Bear with me. Carl versus technology. Technology will win. <laughs> yeah, that's it. it. It's there's literally so many drivers in the green room at the moment trying to grab Daiso is actually a thing of impossibility. There we go, managed to do it. Andrew Dyson, welcome back to the booth. Always a pleasure to have you in here. Um, congratulations on P two. I'm sure you feel a little bit robbed towards the end, but getting that car home with that amount of damage in P two, what a fantastic job, mate! Yeah, thanks, man. Make no mistake. I was, uh, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm really happy to finish uh, second because, or anywhere near the front, not just with the damage, but because of the way this track is and, and how much of a lottery it is. And generally, if you've seen in the past, I suck at it really badly. I find a way to make an error somewhere or somehow lose it for myself, but uh, not today. Um, luckily, I, I got away with it. Um, even when there was that bit of a wreck at that race out there, I was super lucky to not crash and nearly crashed like three times in one wreck so that was pretty <laughs> pretty funny but uh yeah got away with it and uh can't be too mad about that no as you say you managed to really keep going well i mean in that race the final sort of restarts towards the end of the race with that front end damage obviously i imagine that would have hurt you a bit for your your speed but you managed to keep the car tucked in nicely and just keep right at the front of the pack right to the very end oh it was definitely uh it was definitely a parachute man it was <laughs> It was no good, so I just had to manage it, like, you know, make sure I, I found someone to latch onto as much as I could, and uh, one of those race starts there, Neil, was was kind enough to let me in, like, we all know the games that we play, so um, a few of the boys were probably trying to keep me out, and I was trying to get in, and I had a guy behind who probably didn't really know what was going on, just giving me the shove, and it was pretty hairy, but I managed to get down. That was probably the one real hairy moment towards, uh, well, before the last uh, section of the race anyway, so, um, yeah, it just worked out all all right, and I'm... Can't, yeah, like I said, I can't be too mad about it, uh, about the rest of the race. So it was good. So talk us through that final corner for us. Ah, uh, just a bad loser, mate. It doesn't matter. He's, he's not fast enough to stay away from me and there's some tracks he won't even get near me. So I'm not too worried about it. No, look, congratulations on P2. Congratulations on getting home with that damage. I, one question I actually had for you. Is, were you suffering from any heating issues with the car? Yeah, certainly. I was ducking out a lot, and I think Hobbo would have noticed so I was probably dragging him back a few times, so sorry, sorry Hobbo about that. But I just needed to duck out and get some air, because she was getting pretty hot. That's right. I, I called it correct, so I'm happy yeah. about that. I and just wanted to be on. proved right. Yeah. I was just going to say, Carl, you, you got that one 100% right. I, I did have your engine popping a bit sooner, though. I, I was sort of expecting to see your engine expire, but luckily it didn't, and yeah. it managed to get you home. You creeped across the line in front of your teammate, Pierce, as well. Um, but were you just trying to rock forward in the uh, in the rig there to get the car across the line? I expected Neil to come shoot and pass me, man. <laughs> but I think he might have rolled out. It's quite no, hard. he didn't. He was full throttle. <laughs> oh, he's going for me. Oh, it's cheeky dog. No. No, fair play. Fair play. I've got to ask you, Dice, was your wheel straight or was it on a 90 degree or 180 degrees? No, the wheel was pretty across. good. The wheel was pretty good. Um, oh, you mean across the line, actually? Yeah, no, across the line. <laughs> I don't even know, man. All I know is I had no motor on it, and I was expecting it to blow up before I even got going again. <laughs> Look, congratulations. Well done for P2 here at Daytona. A really strong start for your 2022 season. Obviously, we are expecting good things from you this year, so good luck for the rest of the year. But before I let you go, the usual thing is shout-out and love to sponsors. Oh, I think Neil might have... Might have got over them all, but uh, message shout out to all the boys in DPR. We've um, had a bit going on, so the boys are stuck together and we've, uh, you know, got through it all and we're out here just racing and we're doing all the right stuff. So, you know, we'll be here and we'll be racing all sorts of stuff and we look forward to racing throughout the year with all the boys. Um, shout out to you guys for getting this new broadcast together. Looks like there's a few guys in the booth, so that's pretty cool. Looking forward to watching it back. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll shout out to Simrix.com, uh, Southwell Listen Hoist, Ben Max Mechanical, Phoenix Smokers, MP Designs. And um, yeah, shout out to Anscar as well, all the boys behind the scenes for getting us together another season. Like I said, we're looking forward to it. Congratulations. Well done getting that one home. And I'm sure we'll see you back in the booth soon. No, drivers, mate. Hopefully, we'll see you soon. Andrew Dyson there coming home, P2, with a very battered car just creeping it across the line. 
And finally, let's uh, look there. We will crack down the race winner, multiple Daytona 500 winner, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. JCW. Congratulations on a 500 win 2022, first race of the year, and you get a win with it. Cheers, Carl. Yeah, it was a long race. Um, even, you know, uh, I must say, like, even though, you know, I was running up the front, you know, basically all day, you know, it, it, I didn't really think, you know, at many points I thought, you know, I'd actually pull through. But, uh, yeah, somehow got it home first. It was a long race. Um, there were quite a few moments in there. I mean, you managed to keep that car pretty clean all the way to the end. Um, obviously, we saw that... Uh, that moment with, uh, I think it was Scurley, and obviously with your teammate Foster, uh, that didn't help things. Uh, how how much of a clincher was that one for you? Oh, man. Um, for a moment there, I thought my race was over because, uh, yeah, it was um, like, you know, it, even though Scurley apologised, it was, you know, very, very average, and I don't think he'll be wanting to look back at that uh, anytime soon. Um, so, yeah, like, you know, um, I, I thought, you know, all three of us, you know, all three leaders, you know, myself, Dyson and Ed, were going to wreck out. So, yeah, it was, um, uh, you know, the hairiest moment of the race for me, that's for sure. Yeah, we, we saw, obviously, after that, you had a, a fair bit of damage to the front. How much did that affect you towards the end? Uh, man, like, it was so late in the day, um, uh, so late in the race that I never even got a real chance to register it like i don't think it even really came across my mind so yeah man like you know from there on i was basically flying in blind and obviously we've got to talk about that finish as well um yeah you, you, you knew it was coming up so yep. when you came up to the finish there yourself and dyson making the contact in the final corner talk us through your perspective so, yeah, like, you know, from memory, and this is from memory, this isn't, you know, verbatim, um, uh, there was danger, you know, we were coming up down the back straight, uh, danger was in the inside, so me, both me and Daiso, you know, had to go around, and, like, I knew Daiso was going to try something, like, you know, uh, like, I'd be a bit disappointed if he didn't, um, and, uh, yeah, you know, he threw a, like, you know, threw, you know, moved down to the inside, and threw a move down to the outside, and, like, I knew that, you know, if he got, you know, if, like, you know, the, the chance of the side drop was very real. And, like, I knew that, you know, he was working with Jane Russell for most of the race. Um, so I, I knew that. Um, so, like, yeah, essentially, you know, I, 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 I was just trying to kill his momentum. I uh, didn't mean to put him in the wall, but all I was trying to do was, you know, kill his momentum. Like, ultimately... For me, I don't know if I'll ever get a chance to win this race again. So I'd rather take the chance and see what happens in the debrief rather than, you know, just let him sail by and, you know, just, you know, stay awake at night thinking, you know, could I throw in, you know, more of a block, could I be more aggressive? So that, that that's my perspective. And if roles were reversed, um... I'd fully expect uh, Daiso to do something similar um, because, you know, that that's just how it is. You know, th th this, this is a race that only happens once a year. Um, and, yeah, like, you know, a as we saw with Ed, you know, how many chances has he had to win this race? None. And he's been in there five times and he's had fast cars, you know, for quite a few of those years. So ultimately, you just have to try, you know, do your best to take the chance with both hands whenever it comes your way like no matter the circumstance like you know like it, 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 it it's just how it plays out like you know i'd accept comments that the 2020 uh jato 500 race you know that win my first 500 win was a bit of a fast i i will accept those comments because at the time it looked like dave had dave douglas um had the faster car than me but i came across the line first so uh, to, to recap, like, if the win is stripped for me, I will not be upset about it. Like, I won't um, stop racing in Anscar. Like, I'll keep racing in Anscar regardless. It, it's just that I, I, I just needed to put in a performance that I could accept. And this is something I could accept. Like, not from a moral standpoint, but 
from an actual effort standpoint because if you don't put in the effort, you'll never even get close to winning a race like this. So, yeah, I, I know I've waffled on a lot, but yeah, like I, I think I just get that all net out all now. Um, if the stewards d decide that the move was you know illegal or whatever, you know fair, and you know if that's the case, then congratulations to Andrew Dyson for winning the Daytona 500. And um, yeah, uh, we'll. You know, th th I know this. Th you know, there will be you know a lot of raised eyebrows to put it away about this. Um, but yeah, like you know, it it'll stick around for a while. I know that. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll just uh, go racing again. You're the Daytona uh, 500 winner, mate. You can talk as much as you want, JCW. <laughs> right I, I, now, I, they're 35 cars in victory lane, mate. So uh, talk all you want, mate. I was just going to say, JCW, I'd be disappointed with you. And we, we've raced and had some good races if you didn't do that because that's that's a, a, a racer. You, you've got to live for the moment. And it was on for young and old between you and Daiso. And I mean to say, all I can say is well done and take the punishment later on if there is any. Yeah, that, thanks, Mark. Uh, and the thing is, at the end of the day, it's... Uh... You know, tin top racing, it does have these moments. It's the whole thing, you know, there, there, a little bit of contact here and there. And that is part of the racing. But for now, you've got your second Daytona 500 win under your belt. I, I imagine that you feel absolutely on top of the world. Yeah, yeah, I do, man. Yeah, it's uh, crazy. I mean, like, hopefully nothing bad happens this time around because uh, I won the Daytona 500 and then we uh, started a bloody pandemic. So hopefully nothing bad comes... <laughs> This time around, uh, so yeah, um, it, it's definitely uh, sweet. I, I can't enjoy it too much because I've got to go to work tomorrow, but uh, yeah, I'll definitely have a moment uh, later on tonight just to reflect and uh, yeah, just um, yeah, first uh, driver ever at the moment um, to win two Daytona 500s in Anne's car. Congratulations, JCW. Um, obviously, before I let you go, the Sorry, did you want to add something? Yeah, no, I was just going to say to him, take the day off. I'll ring your boss and let him know you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, before I let you go, um, the Natari cars looked like rocket ships out there. You looked like you had a really good setup. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, it was. And um, yeah, like, you know, there were definitely a few moments this week where, you know, we thought we were just going to be trundling around the back. But uh, yeah, uh, similar to last year, you know, we just managed to. Uh, all that together i just I, I just wish these uh these uh ants car speed week would just be a little bit more less stressful um <laughs> so yeah you know the cars are rocket ships and you know it really sucks what happened um to uh norman uh daniel and ed and like you know before the skill incident um happened um you know uh he, he basically told me that you know he he was looking to win the race you know he was you know, going to make a move. Um, yeah, no, and, you know, we'll I, I, I that, respect mate. that. I, I respect that. Yeah. Like, I, I, it wouldn't sit right with me if, um, you know, he just, you know, followed, followed my uh, bumper the whole way around to the end of lap 200. That wouldn't sit right with me. So, yeah, like, you know, we, you know, uh, we, we would have uh, had, you know, a good, good duel uh, between me and Ed towards the end there because, uh, yeah, Dyson, you know, he got damaged from early caution. Mm. So, he wouldn't have been able to do much. So, yeah, it, it, it's a shame. But, uh, yeah, like, there, there's always uh, next year for Ed. And, uh, yeah, this they, will only, you know, make him, you know, more hungry. Because, yeah, like, th this is the last thing he hasn't won, really. Like, he, he's been the cup champion. You know, he's done a lot of things. But this is the last thing on his uh, bucket list. So, yeah, I, I hope for his sake that he does get this uh, win one day. Well, that, that, that answer has our question, Dave. On team orders. Exactly, mate. We were, we were questioning JCW. I was asking the question. I said, does Edward stay or does he go or what happens? So it's unfortunate we didn't get to that point, but uh, good to know that uh, that's where he said was that because I respect that too. Yeah. I just expected him to wreck you across the line to take the win. <laughs> yes, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy with that too. <laughs> yeah, JCW, the usual thing. Shout out and love to all of our sponsors. Yeah, so um, shout out again to... Um... Ed for, you know, having such a good race, you know, up until it went downhill. Shout out as well to uh, Daniel Hedersheed, you know, people uh, people would have uh, actually forgotten this was his first Daytona 500, so 
yeah, you know, he, he, he you know, did all right for his first attempt. Uh, shout out to Norman as well. He had a, a rough day, just couldn't get a handle on the setup. Um, yeah, shout out to the Dance Car League and everyone as well. And, um, yeah, shout out to Dyson as well. Um, Dyson, mate, I will get in contact because I do want to have a chat with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, probably, you know, in the next couple of days. Um, and, uh, yeah, shout out to the Anscar admins as well. Um, you, Carl, um, Danny G, Matt Hunter. Um, and, yeah, shout out to the sponsors for Natari that allow us to do what we do every week. Uh, AJ, AJD Australia and uh, Fully Floored Limited. And uh, shout out as well to uh, Performance Stream for picking up the uh, uh, broadcasting for 2022. Thank you so much, JCW. Pleasure to have you in the booth. Good luck, mate, and I hope we get to see you again soon. No worries. Thanks, guys. So, chaps, that is the end of the 500. A big shout-out to everybody who watched watched the race and commented tonight on Facebook. Thank you so much. We really appreciate the feedback. Uh, before we finish, though, final thoughts from you guys. Uh, just for me, mate, congratulations to everybody that made their way into the, full, uh, the 43 strong field. Uh, even if you didn't take part for much longer, the Steve Hoppets and that, they uh, they got there, so that's an achievement in itself, and uh, it was good racing. These cup cars are a much better package now to race on these super speedways, and uh, look out next week because I'm, uh, I'm coming to uh, get some redemption. <laughs> uh, um, for me, mate, I'd just like to thank uh, yourself um, and Matt and Ed for letting me be part of the, uh, the team tonight. Um, it's been great. Um, and hopefully I can get back a few more times through the year. Um, congratulations to JCW. Um, and again, just to uh, reflect, uh, rep uh, long day, long day. To echo uh, Dave's words, congratulations on everyone that made it because um, you all deserve a pat on the back. Great long race, some great, great um, tussles. And yeah, just a great day overall. Also, I want to add a little special mention to you, Carl, mate, uh, for being the glue, mate, keeping us keeping us thing on the road, keeping the show going, mate, when you can. Uh, big shout out to you, mate. All right, cheers, and we love you, mate. Uh, we love you. <laughs> Manny Hunter as well. He, he deserves a lot more of the praise. I just do a yeah. good talk. Um, uh -huh. So, no, a big thank you to you all, Dave and Mark, for joining me here in the booth. To Matt Hunter for getting everything working. Uh, to, of course, all the admins, uh, you know, Danny G, Foss, Edward Foster, Matt Hunter, um, and to all the drivers who competed tonight for giving us a fantastic show. We hope you can catch us next week at Fontana. We look forward to seeing you then as the Anscar Cup continues. It's going to be one heck of a season, and we yeah. hope you can join us for the rest of the year. Thank Bring you so it on. much. And we will see you all again soon.